All right, guys, we are here with the beautiful Jessica Milagros and my boy Kiefer, and we are going to break down uh, BB Can 11 for you guys, the cast. It came out yesterday, and uh, there's a lot of like mixed emotions around it, around the cast, and uh, as some of you know, uh, they've canceled the feeds for BB Can 11, so this year is going to be a little bit different than you're used to, uh, one, without the feeds, and two, uh, there seems to be a lot of recruits in this cast, and we're going to break them all down, and we're going to kind of go over it all. And uh, stuff. But first, before we get into all this, uh, I want these uh, lovely guests to introduce themselves. Jess, tell us about yourself. Hey, I'm Jessica Milagros. I was on BB US. I was about to say BB Canada. I wish <laughs> um, BB US season twenty one. That's it. <laughs> Perfect. Great introduction. That's all. That's it. That was perfect. To the point. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Keith, what's going on, man? Tell us about yourself. What's up? It's your boy from the Res, uh, Big Brother Canada season uh, nine. Yeah, I had to think about that. And I want Canada's favorite player. Thank you for voting for me. Uh, I appreciate it. 10 G spent it all in one day. Life is good. Nicely done. Good intros. Good intros. I like it. I like it. So uh, we did kind of go over this on the Twitch channel a little bit. I do I do stream on Twitch six nights a week. I could put the link in below. And uh, we kind of went over the cast a little bit. But we're going to go over it together today and kind of break it down and see our thoughts. Because I didn't really get to hear a lot of Jess's thoughts or Kiefer's thoughts. And, and I want to I wanna know I want to know what they think about the cast as well. So we are going to get into it a little bit. Um, Jess also does a podcast. Kiefer also does a podcast. So I'm going to put the links below in the comments. Guys, make sure you check them out. Support, uh, support the family here. Uh, they're, they do a really 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 good job so make sure you check them out and check those out as well they're gonna do an awesome job so do you guys want to get right into this like do we dive right in and uh and go for it Let's all right do it. perfect that's a good answer okay so all right so we're gonna start off with um amal and uh who wants to start who wants to go first what are our thoughts about amal so here we go we've got uh here we go we've got amal <laughs> is the first person we're gonna talk about and uh let's fire it off to keith keith what are your thoughts about amal talk to us um, thank you. Um, um, just in the pre-interviews, I love her personality. I love everything that she has going for her. But her saying she doesn't want to be in any alliances is big brother red flags for me. Because stick me in 27 alliances to keep me protected. If you in an alliance out there floating by yourself early on, that could be a reason why you're put up and you're put out. Uh, pawns go home. You know, people go home for the most mundane shit. At the f for the first couple weeks, it's it's the most terrifying thing, and I think in reality television is being the first boot off of anything, especially on Big Brother. Um, it could literally be for just playing too strong, not playing enough, uh, anything, anything in the game. So and I think not being in an alliance is a huge default. But I'm hoping that she can bounce back from that and realize when someone comes to you wanting to work with you, you say yes and you work with them. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's my hopes. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna add on to that a little bit too. I think the whole uh, lone wolf thing was a little bit weird to me. I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't understand that. Why would you not want to take an alliance? And I'm I agree with you 100 percent on that. It's like you if any, if someone wants to give you an alliance, you take it. You run with it. Maybe build some connections. Uh, even if it's a false alliance, even if it's an alliance you don't want to work with, you take it anyways, and you just kind of work with it a little bit, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I wasn't too uh, too sure about that about the whole uh, the lone wolf thing. But uh, hopefully she can elaborate on that a little bit. Maybe she has a, a bigger plan going in. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about to be very, very honest. Uh, what about you, Jess? <laughs> I think we talked about this last time and why that question was even asked, but I guess yeah. it was asked for her specifically because I think she's the only person who answered it this way. Yeah. And I, um, I, I didn't quite get it. Although, you know what? I'm kind of opposite of Kiefer. I'm, I didn't want to be in a ton of alliances. I wouldn't, I didn't want to be in all of the alliances. Uh, maybe maybe because I was just a little bit more um, of that loyal type of player where I the people that I wanted to be in an alliance with, I wanted to be, uh, you know, boring and loyal to. So, um, <laughs> um, but that really surprised me. And, and what is this occupation of super fan? Because I've never yeah. heard of a super fan that didn't want to be in an ally. That's a good... <laughs> what mm -hmm. super fan? What super fan is this? I, I thought that was a typo. I thought that that was a typo. 
<laughs> that's a good call out on that because yeah, she's a super fan uh, as an occupation and a super fan that doesn't want any alliances. That's a little interesting to me, but that yeah. So our overall thoughts on Amal, do we think she's going to do okay? They like, oh, and actually Amal was the one that said she wanted to go after the guys, right? Is that the one that said she wanted to go after the big, the big guys? Correct. Yeah. There's a lot of bros in this season. There's a lot of, a lot of bros. There's five or so. Her hands can be full. Her hands might be full if she's going after the bros because there's a lot of them, right? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I Our, say, yep. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I will say that um, for someone who doesn't want any line, it is going to be a lone wolf and is not going to have the numbers to be able to take out all the bros, which is pretty much half of the house yeah. at this point. I don't know how she's going to fare well because. Uh, the boroughs are going to smell it from a mile away. It's not like, yes. you know, and they're going to target her pretty early and they're going to have the numbers. Yeah, that's so. the thing. It's a numbers game. Big Brother's a numbers game. And uh, so mm-hmm. I was really surprised to hear she wanted to be a lone wolf. But, you know, here's the thing, too, I want to say. The bios, I always t- I always watch them with a grain of salt because anybody can say whatever they want. They can say whatever they want in these bios. They could say they're this, they're that. They're going to do this, they're going to do that. Once you walk in that house and you're face-to-face with everybody, everything just falls out the window. Everything is everything you said before the pregame, it just it doesn't it's gone. It's out throw it away because now you're in the game and and uh, you're face-to-face with everybody that you're playing against. So so she says she wants to be a lone wolf. Do I see that happening? No. I don't, I don't see it at all unless, you know, who knows. Um okay, so that is a mall um uh, Thoughts going far, going early. What do we think here? Middle of the pack, uh, impactful player, kind of just there. What do we think? I think uh, I, I would go middle of the pack yeah. because I think there's some other glaring potential first boots coming down the line. Um, yeah, like and any, 10 of them. You know, one HOH, it's, you know, Big Brother is the butterfly effect. One little thing could change the whole course of the game. So who knows? Absolutely. That's very, that's very true. I mean, not that I think about it. I mean, she doesn't give me first boot vibes. I think she'll be quiet enough and like to herself enough where she won't um, maybe ruffle any feathers. But you know what? Last year, um, Melina was also kind of a lone wolf and she was pretty much taken out very, you know, very early and with no problems. So we'll see, but I definitely see her as a pre-jury. Yeah. I could see her kind of like just fitting in a bit, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if, I mean, again, we don't know. Right. But I could see her kind of just like not, you know, not making any big moves or anything, just kind of there. And then her time comes and see you later kind of thing. Okay, so that is Amal. All right, so next up we have Anika. Anika, she is 28 from Saskatoon. 28 from Saskatoon, and she's an investment advisor. All right, Jess, I'm coming to you first this time. What are your thoughts on Anika? I want to say, first of all, she's stunning. That I just like off the bat blew blew me away because she is so beautiful. Um, that being said, I'm a little worried because she looks like she has no idea what she got herself into. She says she's not, um, she's not very, um, she's not much of a big brother player or a watcher. She kind of has no idea what she got herself into. So I, this one worries me a little bit, but absolutely gorgeous. I think because there's so many bros. We may see her stay a little bit just because someone might have a crush on her. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like she is in over her head. She has no idea. I think she said she watched one season before. Um, that's one thing I never understood. That's one thing I just, I really don't understand about. If you're going on the show, if you're going in this house and you know the, the process, it's not like they just call you the day before and, hey, you want to come down to the studio and, and play on a show. Like, you know in advance. You know well in advance. Uh, especially if you've auditioned, if you've auditioned, it's like a three month process. Um, if you're recruited, it's similar, same thing that you still have time to do all this stuff. So the fact that she knew she was going on the show and she didn't prep for it, she didn't even just watch episodes and get to know the game and understand it. Yeah. I kind of watched one season that doesn't do it, you know? So, you know, and I'm not saying you have to, you don't have to watch every season and watch the feeds to know what's going on to understand the game. A lot of times people just have that natural, like, you know, street smarts or social, social ability, but but like, I just think she's over in over her head. I don't think she's gonna, you know, understand the dynamics of the house and how things will, you know, can happen and how people are gonna turn their backs. I think she's gonna be too trusting. Like, there's just, I feel like, 
I, I just feel like she's in over her head. I feel like she doesn't know what's coming her way, and and uh, it's just unfor- unfortunate because she seems like a really really nice person. And again, like none of this is personal. It's always game wise. Like I'm always looking at as the player, never the person. Like what they're going to do in the house is how I always look at it. I mean, they all seem like very nice people. I think she's she's beautiful. I think she um I think she's a really nice person, like on the outside. But this is Big Brother, and I just think she's in over her head. To be honest, what do you think, Keith? A little bit the same. A little bit the same. Um, I I think. Um, Her background in finance and her living kind of in that competitive career-wise world may sparse and and drive a little bit of competitive edge into her potentially. Um, Not watching it, but who knows? She could be watching seasons right now as we speak. Um, So, yeah, I I, I see her potentially going deep into the game. If I had to predict, I would say, uh, you know, top seven. Okay. Do you think they're already in the house? They're in the house no, right now. No, no, no. Yeah, they are. Are they in the house? They're in the house right now. I think they might. They they're probably in the house right now, playing their first week. They're in the house right now. As we as they're we're doing this, they're in yeah. they're in the house right now, scheming okay, and well, pretending to like each other. Big brother, right now. She's definitely she's not. Wa- she's not big watching brother. Big Brother. She's literally Yo, playing Big Brother. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. Yeah, it is. Um, like, yeah, I I like Nika. Um, I I think yeah, I think. She has the potential to go far because, again, we don't know what twists are coming. Um, and just, you know, being strong and having that uh, career-based background, I think it's going to serve her well. Interesting. I like that take. And uh, I like that take. So Jess and I, I think we're more similar on this. Kiefer, she's, he's saying, listen, man, she's going to. And here's the thing. She could go deep. I mean, you're right. She could. We, we don't know. And, and I like how you brought up the twists. We all know twists happen. Sometimes they can burn your game quick. Sometimes they can propel you ahead. We don't know. So uh, very good points from both of you. All right. So wow. next, next we've got Claudia Campbell. And uh, she is from Kensington, Prince Edward Island, marketing coordinator. All right, I'll go first on this one. I didn't go first yet. I'll go first on this one. Here's the thing, you know, I... Um, Oh man, I, you know, I, she seems like a really, really sweet, nice, nice, very, very sweet. I think again in over her head. I don't think uh, I just I don't see her have that having that cutthroat kind of like the things you need to do in the game. I don't see it now. Hopefully, I'm missing something here. She just seems really nice, really kind. Um, you know, she is looking for a showman's. Uh, there's some studs in the house. Maybe, you know, maybe they, they get together. Maybe she gets in a majority. Who knows? Like, that's that's a beautiful thing about Big Brother. We don't know how it plays out. But if she can't, I don't know, man. I just don't see it in her. I don't see the, I don't see a hunger in her, man. I, I got to be honest. I'm sure she's a really nice girl, really sweet girl. I just don't see any hunger in there that's that, like, cutthroat or, like, the that's going to do the move that's going to propel her ahead uh, or, or something like that. I just don't see it. I see her being very passive. I don't know. Uh, what do we think here, uh, Jess? What do you think? Um, I kind of agree. Oh, you know, when they asked her um, what kind of a, oh, how much she knew <laughs> about Big Brother, I feel like that always, it's always a tell t- sign, right? She's like, I'm a medium. Oh, like, yeah. I'm a medium player. I'm like, what does that even, you know, what does that even mean? Like, okay, so she's a medium player. She, it, like, she gives me, I, I said this before in like on your stream, Bruno, that she reminds me of um, a Heather from season two. Yeah. She kind of has these, you know, homegrown, really sweet vibes. Um, so I think that maybe she might um, be able to pull at some heartstrings to have some people want to watch over her very bro type behavior. I feel like mm. a bro can really like grab on and be like, I'm going to protect her type of situation. She might be, uh, maybe the little sister of a couple of people, maybe the daughter of said oldest person in the house that we'll talk about later. Um, you know, so I think that she'll probably play that like, you know, doish type of girl um and she'll and and she might and she might stay there because i don't see the um i don't see that drive of like right you know of like what is she gonna do she doesn't look like she has a manipulative bone in her body or if she knows how to play it it'd be very interesting to see but i think she'll be she'll be taken she'll be taken care of and she'll and she'll probably have somebody who does not like her specifically because she's so docile. Now, you know, she'll probably be like the big, you know, 
the big uh, personality types. Did she? Did she say she wanted the? Sh- she's the one that said she wanted a showman's, right? Or she was looking for one or whatever. I think they all pretty much said. A lot of them said they were looking for a showman. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this this year has a very big potential. There's a lot of lot of single, you know, single yeah. individuals. I think that out of the whole sixteen, there might be four that are in a relationship. Wow. So, or you know, married or in a you know relationship. So, what's mm-hmm. what is a yeah, medium it's... fan anyway? Is that someone that just started watching the show? I don't know what is that. I don't know what that is, but she's a medium yeah, fan. More. All right, Keith. Some people think they're super fans by just watching, right? You know, more than half of the seasons. Right, right, right. <laughs> Keith, let's hear it. Um, I think you can't underestimate anybody from a small community. I think living in a small community is an advantage in Big Brother because you have to have thick skin because everybody knows your name and everybody talks about you no matter what. So I'm looking for big things out of the young lady from PEI. Um, I think um, you're going to surprise a lot of people. Um, And this is the first of many on the cast that are known by alum. I believe um, Peely um martin now is she go by martin yeah um, really, yeah knows she knows no. claudia oh really um I did not know so that. that is the first house guest on the list that knows an alum so being a medium fan she already has one of you know the more well-known alums being married to kevin martin obviously you know big brother canada five winner bruno was in their wedding <laughs> all this and all that so bruno is already friends of a friend with claudia Six degrees um, of separation. Exactly. Bruno well, knows her. Not even Bruno's going to be at her wedding. Um, oh, yeah. So now, yeah, I, I expect big things. I just, I love when we get people from small towns. Um, myself being from a very small town, I think being in the environment of, you know, I don't want to say it it was toxic, but it can get toxic when rumors start to go around and you got to get ahead of that shit right away. So I think she might have some of those capabilities already and they'll just kick in without her even knowing it. So I, I got I got high hopes from the the young lady from PEI. That was a beautiful that was a beautiful story, Keith. I um He totally changed my mind right now. I'm also from a small <laughs> town called Chicago, Illinois, and I feel like the same way. I totally get you. <laughs> I'm doubling down on what I said. I'm gonna put it this way. I think it's a great story. She's from a small town. I'm doubling down on what I said. I'm telling you, man. It's like I, I, no, no disrespect. I think she's a sweet girl. I'm doubling down, man. I don't know. All right. This is this is one of my hot takes. I got a couple more hot takes coming for you. I think I might pick her in my draft, y'all, because I mean, (laughs) Keeper was just that convincing. I got her in on my. I got she's on my list. You guys, I I need to join your drafts. This is. I need to join your drafts, man. This is great. <laughs> all right. So that is Claudia. Um, yeah, we're all mixed on her, I guess. But so, so Keith, you think she's going far? I think she's, I think, she, see, this to me, it's like either she's going to, I don't know. I don't see her getting along with people in the house too much. She might fall into a little alliance, but I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it. Maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. Uh, she seems like a sweet girl and, and no disrespect to, to her or her family, you know, if you're watching by chance. Uh, again, it's nothing personal. It's always gameplay. And uh, that's how I look at it is the game. It's it's always the gameplay and it's a different beast. So whatever we say in here, guys, it's strictly about the game in the house. It's never personal. Um, we're all going to meet and mm-hmm. get along at the end of the show. Just a heads up. So yeah, I just don't think she has that because this game is a tough game and, and, and you're going to hear it once they come out of the house and they're going to explain it all to you guys. It is a very tough game. And uh, it's a bigger beast than people realize. So, okay. So that is Claudia. And uh, we're a little mixed on her, but uh, there she is. So, all right. So next we have Daniel. I know a lot of people are excited for Daniel. I know I think on Twitter he's the the favorite right now. We got Daniel Clark, uh, Toronto, Ontario, graphic designer. Who went first last time? Was it Jess? All right, Kiefer, let's hear your thoughts on Daniel. Let's see what you think about Daniel. I like Daniel. Um... I have a worry that Daniel will come in guns a blazing, say a little bit too much uh, about the wrong thing at the wrong time type of deal. Um, but, you know, I I feel like because I've heard Bruno's take on Daniel already, I really <laughs> want to root for Daniel. I really want Daniel to be our season's winner. I wow. really, really want to see Dan win this entire game. And that's only because I just, yeah, I just, uh, I would just love to stick it to Bruno. Um, 
<laughs> but he's another super fan. He's in the Twitter streets. He's he's well known by you know the the community of Big Brother. So uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, if you want my honest take, I think he's going to be uh, pre jury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Here. Jess, How let's hear it. How, no, this is a travesty. Uh, like this, this right here, I will not have any Daniel slander on this show. Uh, you know, this this is ridiculous. Look, as far as Daniel is okay, I get it. I, I don't know if BB Can has the same, um, you know, the the same curse, but you know, we do have in the U.S. kind of a super fan you know, a super fan curse for being early boots. And so I totally, you know, I totally get it. Um, you know, sometimes they just play too hard. That is definitely one of my concerns of Daniel, that I feel like he has a very intense personality, which I love. I love his personality, his outlook. I think maybe he could come off too, um, he could come off a little bit too hard. I'm hoping that I'm not seeing that. I think what I'm seeing is just an an intense, you know, um, excitement and energy for even playing this game because he is such a super fan. But I mean, a super fan, not only has he watched every season and, you know, everything about BB Can and the U.S., but he's been involved in multiple orgs. He's been on Sequester. He's won. I mean, and if anybody's played Sequester, which I have, and I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, sequester show, like uh, sequester games um, in real time, they're intense and they're insanely strategic. And he has won, he has won one and he's been on a repeating season of Winners at War and he made it insanely far in that one as well. He's very strategic. He's very personable. He has a way to charm. Like I've seen this guy like in action. I'm super excited to see how he plays. Um, he does have an intense personality. There have been a lot of people that have said that um, his type of personality does not really suit well for for them and vice versa, but I do know some that will be very attracted to him. So it'll be very, it'll be be very interesting. And he has kind of this Kiefer like uh, charm to him. He has this like like I don't know like Kiefer swag. I want to call it where he's Whoa. like I want to be in every alliance. I want to be in every single situation. You know, I want to you know be a three in a in a showman's and then get rid of it. And like he has. He has these strategies, and I think that he can be very adaptable because there's several strategies in his, you know, in his armor. So, like, I'm hoping that he does not disappoint. I do not see him as a first boot, and I don't see him as pre-jury. I'm going to go with him all the way, and I want him to win. Wait, wait, wait. Because I think he's going to be a winner, and because I want to prove Bruno wrong. Did you just I say he's going to win this? I, is this I your pick? Mine. I changed mine now. Huh? I, I, is this your pick? Daniel is my winner pick, yes. One of my Whoa. winner picks. Whoa! I know. And mind you, I want to say that Kevin uh, from last year was also my winner pick, and he won. And I feel like even though Kevin's strategy is insanely different because he was kind of under the radar, I um, mean, without this type of personality, that um, he was also a super fan. And he mm -hmm. kind of knew how to maneuver it. So I think Daniel knows he has a big personality, but I also think he knows that big personalities go home. I'm, I'm hoping he knows how to okay. take the reins and kind of, you know, use it to his advantage. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to okay, I'm gonna give my opinion here on, on Daniel here. Um, <laughs> nice. Be nice, Bruno. I'm nice. So here's the thing. I think on the outside world, amazing personality. I love this. I love, I love that. You know, he's outgoing. I'd rather hang out with people that are outgoing and fun and full of life than, you know, like a piece of bread. You know what I mean? So I, I really, I respect it and I like it. Again, I'm looking at Big Brother the game. I think, um, he, like he said, he's audition. he's auditioned for 11 season. He's, he's 11 seasons. He doesn't want to go in and just, you know, he wants to come in and make a mess or he wants to play. That is a mentality that's affected a lot of super fans. And we can queue up Frenchie from BB, whatever that was, 24, 23, I don't remember what that was. 
You know, he was the super fan that went in and he tried out for 150 seasons, whatever it was. He finally gets in and just makes a mess because he thinks he's playing to Twitter. Buddy, you got to focus on the house. Don't worry about anybody on the outside. You focus on who's in front of you. And I think this Daniel's such a super fan and he wants to put on such a show that he's going to play himself out the door. And I'm with Kiefer. I think he's going to be an early boot. I think he's pre-jury. Uh, even in his bio in the video on, I think it was ET Canada, he was basically saying, Oh, I just want to find my sister and hang out with my sisters. And yeah, I kind of get along with the boys too. That just the way he said that, if you guys haven't watched ET uh, videos, watch his and just read, just watch how he says that. Yeah, I like the boys too. In other words, what he's saying is he doesn't get along with the guys very much. You look at this house, it's a lot of bros. You got, you know, that's a lot of bros. And if he's not getting along with them and they're not getting along with him, guess who's a target, you know? And if, if they know that he's going to be targeting them, guess who they're going to be targeting back? This is, there's a lot of like factors that play into this. Um, I think he's going to outplay himself. I think uh, he has a really big personality, which again is amazing in the real world. I love it. I think he's awesome. I can't wait to actually meet him and hang out with him in the real world. I'm talking big brother, the game. I think it can be a little much sometimes to people in the house. You know, you're in that house in these environments. You, you it's, it's not like you're just hanging out at someone's house. It's a very different environment. And if you understand what it's like in the house, what you two do, you know that it can be a lot. And it, and, and at times, you know, it's like, it's just it, it, people want sometimes just space to themselves or just want peace and quiet or whatever it is. And then there's people always like going off and it's, it's tough. And, and I, I want to say, I want to cheer for him. I know the community's cheering for him. I'm just being honest about it. I see him playing himself out the door and uh, I don't see him doing very well at all, unfortunately. And yes, he's played these ORGs, ORGs or orgs, whatever you want to call them. Very, 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 you can win a hundred of these things. It is like, it's like playing house league. Uh, when you're playing in the Big Brother house, that is the big leagues. ORGs is house league. I'm going to say it with my full chest. Uh, you're not face-to-face -face with your opponents. You're hiding behind a screen. You don't have to be in there face-to-face -face dealing with them, feeling the presence, being around people, hanging out in a real social environment. It's very, very different. So I I'm going to say right now, you can win ORGs all you want. When you're in the Big Brother house playing the real big game, it's very different when you're face-to-face -face with your opponents and you're lying to their face and you're trying to – big difference. So that's my take. A keeper as you're saying this and Keeper's face as yours. That's my take on this guy. Say something, Kiefer, it, it seems Go like for it. Let's hear it, Keeper. What's your take? You wanna Tell me I'm wrong. Respond. Tell me I'm wrong right now. I do like that. I – I don't know. I was kind of joking around when I said he was going to be first boot, but <laughs> I don't think he's first boot. I don't think he's first boot. Not first boot, not first boot. I, I'm pre jury. I think he has the ability to go far. Um, oh. So we'll so we'll we'll see what's up. I think I think he's pre jury. Pre jury. I will say though, I I see where you're coming from, Bruno. But at the same time, I would never in a million years compare this kid to. Uh, to, to someone like Frenchie, mainly because Frenchie was just, <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm just, uh, I was used, I'm not. No offense to Frenchie, no offense yeah. to French. I'm like, but what I'm saying is like, French was not the type of super fan that this Daniel is. Like, like French has never played an org. He's never even tried right. to think strategically. He's just watched from the comfort of his home and like talked the talk right. on Twitter to, and, and like, you know, contacted a few you know, and contacted a, a few house guests. That's about mm -hmm. the extent of Frenchie. So this is my hot take. This is my hot take of the season because I know everyone's loving this guy. I'm, I'm just, this is my take on him. I think he's going to play himself with the door. This is my honest opinion. I could be, I hope I'm wrong. I ho how about this? I hope I'm wrong, but that's how I see it. Fair? I can see that. Okay. I hope I'm wrong, but I, I don't, I think, I think he's going to be watching on the couch with the rest of us. All right. So that is uh, Daniel. Um, again, I think on the outside world, I think this guy's awesome. I just, it is what it is. That's what I see. I, maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but uh, I don't know. All right. That's Daniel Clark. For, uh, he's a graphic designer from Toronto. So next we have Dan Sabo. He is from Niagara Falls, Ontario, and he's a DJ. Uh, who went first last time? Kiefer Jess. What are our thoughts on Dan Sabo? <clears throat> Dan, why those earrings, Dan? No offense, but like something about like having, you know, those two like uh, cross earrings on on both ears, and it's not even just one. I don't know. Um, okay, it's like the eighties like, are coming back. Huh? The eighties are coming back. back. He, he's giving me very George Michael's vibes. Um, but. I don't know. I think, let's see, with Dan, aside from those uh, cross earrings, I mean, very, uh, very forgettable. 
Um, it, I think he's kind of that mid guy, not a bro, not a. He's a Bruno, like <laughs> not, ah. not a bro, but not not a bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're not gets you're along with everybody like, in that pack. Yeah, like he's he's kind he kind of gives me Bruno vibes. So maybe he will, uh, you know, be a little bit more strategic than most. I can I can see that. I think he's gonna get along with people. I mean, you kind of have to get along with people if you're a DJ, right? Like maybe. I mean, he could get he. He, <laughs> Keeper's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know that. But he has, you know, music He can get, you know, he can get along With a lot of people Just in talking about different types of music I'm hoping he's like a very um, He's a DJ who plays a lot of different You know, different types, styles of music Get along with a lot of people um, He said he was a clean freak too Which doesn't matter anymore Because I guess this whole house is a clean yeah. Are clean freaks, right? They're they're all a ton of clean of, of freaks um yeah he he's kind of like middle pack to me i feel like you know i think he could get along with a lot of different with a lot of different individuals he kind of strikes me as a little bit of a chameleon Hmm. um nothing like nothing big nothing nothing uh, yeah nothing stands out kind of thing nothing really stands out yeah yeah Yeah, those earrings I'm with you on this. I think the guy is going to be like a middle of the pack kind of guy. I think he's going to get along. I, I don't see him getting targeted by either side. If there's like a split, I feel like he'll be one of those guys. He's kind of going to be kind of liked by everybody and just kind of do his thing. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I think there's a lot of big, t- I think there's going to be big, t- I already see a kind of like a split in the house and uh, I see him sitting in a good spot. I don't see him being targeted. I see him kind of just being there. Maybe he does something. Maybe he doesn't. Uh, but I'm, I feel like this is the kind of guy that he's. Uh, there's going to be times where he's going to have the control. Do I vote this way or this way? I think people are going to come to him for his vote. And he's going to ride the middle a little bit. And like you say, if kind of social, get along with everybody. Um, you know, he's a DJ. There are social people. They're out the bars and the clubs and doing their thing. So I think uh, I think he knows how to be social. And I think he's going to be okay socially. I think he's going to get along with the bros. I don't think the bros are going to target him. And I think he's going to get along with the non-bros and everybody else. And I think uh, they're not going to target him either. So I think he fits. He's that kind of role that just fits right in that sweet spot where, you know, even if you, you're like, man, that person's kind of dangerous. But I have a lot of other people I have to get out first. Like, it's when's the right time to take this guy out when there's so many other targets all over the place. I think he's that, that kind of role, and, and I kind of like it. So uh, I think he's going to do okay. Though? What's that? Would you agree that I compared him to, like, yeah, a once you, of a player? Like, I feel like you were kind of in the middle. As yeah. Well. You were the bro, but, you know, you got Yeah, got like I get along. Somebody. Yeah, exactly. I get along with the bros. Like I'm not like a, I'm not like a bro and like you know what I mean. But I, I get along with them. I get along with people. That, you know, I, I I agree. I agree with that. I kind of agree with that. I think this guy, uh, he might be okay. He might be okay. Kiefer, what are your thoughts? Um, thoughts. Um, this is another tie to an alumni. This is Spicy V's close personal oh, friend. Is this ah. Does Spicy V. Have a friend? Okay. Yes. So this is she's so Dan at least watched season nine. Um, That's a good question. How many confirmed. seasons? Yeah, exactly. So maybe watched season ten and decided to apply. Um, but he's giving me Gino vibes, just kind of with like his mundane, very calm, the way he answers things. It always seems very thought out. I think that Dan could be a very surprise comp beast. I think hmm, in the yeah. physical nature or in the mental nature of the game, it's just the way that I think he might think differently uh, will spark him to be uh, a comp beast because Big Brother Canada throws a lot of different comps at you, a lot of booth comps. Um, sometimes they're physical, sometimes they're strange balance ones. So, you know, being a DJ might be actually a decent skill set to have. But I think Dan will be the surprise comp beast of the season like we've seen in Gino last season. That's one thing I always say in the, in the chat. A lot of people always want to target the guys with the muscles, right? They see the guys with the muscles, they got to target them. But there's so many comps that are memory comps, you know, endurance comps, crapshoot comps, uh, memory, A or B, before or after, whatever it is. Put a puzzle together. Not every comp is lift up a car, you know what I mean? So um, it's, yeah. these are the kind of players that you're right. You know, it's like they can win all these different comps. Maybe they're not the strongest guy, but, you know, maybe he's got something upstairs or knows how to do memory or puzzles or remembers the days, whatever it is. So that's a, that's a really good take on it too. So this is this is Dan Sabo. Um, yeah, I think we're kind of like, I don't think anybody's like super impressed, but not really like not impressed. I think he kind of fits kind of in the middle somewhere. And uh, yeah, I think it's a good read on him. So that's Dan Sabo. Next, we have Hope. 
uh, who is from, he's from Milton, Ontario, and he's a skills coach. Kiefer, let's hear what you think about our boy Hope. What's going on? I think he's a bit young. Um, he's only 23 years old. And he's in a relationship, but he said he's willing to search for romance already, which to me is a bit of a red flag. Um, to me, that censors, that shows like flip floppy right away. It's like, okay, I'm I'm committed to this, but I'm not really committed to that. So even just that, and like that's just me as a fan dissecting like one comment that he made. So I'm worried that he's not going to be able to stay loyal potentially. Um, but he might be targeted as a big physical threat. There's been a, a handful of players that have said, we want to get the big guys out right away. You know, maybe the first comp goes to someone who just puts him up because of how he looks, uh, because he's a big physical threat. Um, so, I mean, there was the murmurs of of getting Jed out very first because he was a big physical threat on my season. Uh, we see it all the time on reality shows. It's just, do you have what it takes to put them up? And if you shoot, you can't miss kind of deal. So I don't know. Uh, I just think his his youthfulness is going to go against him in this season. I, I'm not sure, but I think he is the youngest housemate at 23. 23. It's pretty young. I, I'm actually I'm I'm fully agreeing with you on this. I think uh, I think yeah, he's very young. You could tell he's got you know he's he's full of energy and it's and it's great. I always say this with I use Dallas as an example. Dallas from season four and five. I use Dallas as an example all the time. When you're the life of the party, it's always good on the outside. You know, you can be the life of the party, then the party's over, you go home and see you later. But when you're in the Big Brother house, you can't be the life of the party for 10 weeks straight. You burn out. And a lot of the times, the ones that are always like, hey, you know what's going on? And then they burn out quick, two, three weeks in, uh, and then it, 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 they burn out. It's just the way it is. You can't, you can't keep that going 24 hours a day. Uh, I agree with the with the whole thing where he's like, yeah, I'm in a relationship, but you know, when I'm in there, we'll see what happens. I agree. I also think he's going to talk too much. I think that's going to be a big thing. I think he's gonna he's gonna spill. You know, he doesn't understand the game side of it, and I think I think he's gonna get uh, manipulated to give a little bit of information, too much information uh, to the other side, the wrong side. I think he's gonna get caught. I think he's gonna try to make too many friends, make too many alliances, gonna get caught up in his own lies and his own stories. I think he's gonna I think he's gonna outplay himself, and uh, and um, you know, at first he's I think people are gonna really like him because he's got a really good personality you know he's got that beautiful smile and he's he's awesome like he's a very athletic guy good looking guy uh but i think he's gonna play himself i think uh he's gonna run wild with the information and and uh and say it to the wrong person and it's gonna bite him that's, that's what i see i see him i see him talking too much in the house that's that's what i see uh jess what are your thoughts um yeah he's um obviously a very good looking uh cat i think he is um a, a charmer he kind of gave me some jamar vibes uh in terms of his like personality and his uh what was he, he had yeah he phrased that he was saying it was like um, ah or something like that he's like ah. it, it was it yeah. was very interesting because he just kept on saying it so it felt like okay like he's got this you you can see his personality come through i agree with you i think that he talks he talks a lot, um, but in kind of a low key. I mean, I, the the way his back and forth with um, with Judson was, um, I feel like he's going to rub some people the wrong way with his sarcasm or his his jokes. Like, I don't think they're gonna land very well. They're gonna find it either a little demeaning or a little insulting. You know, because even the way he was playing around with Jed and he was like, "I'm, you know, I'm gonna have girls." you you know i'm gonna do it like this but not like you know like <laughs> i feel like if he starts talking like that to enough people in the house they're just gonna it's just gonna come off in a very you know in a very insulting way um it's gonna be very interesting yeah he is he he is um pretty uh pretty young i feel like he's gonna come off a little cocky um guys athletic is know the game so <laughs> i don't think it, it, I, I feel like he's going to come off a little disloyal and untrusting. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. And, and the guy's athletic. Like he was doing, you see his vert, he's jumping up on those, on the pads and he's dunking and stuff. Like the guy's crazy athletic, crazy in shape. You know, like I said, good looking guy. He's full of energy, but in the house, man, it doesn't always all translate in the right direction, you know? So it's, uh, 
we'll see. But yeah, I think he's too. I think he's young. I think he's young. Like if I look at myself when I was 23 going in that house, I would have played way different and just have a different mentality on life. You know, when you're older and you play, you have a different view on things and, and you know, when to, to, okay, you know, it's time to, to calm down a little bit or whatever, turn it off or whatever. Um, yeah, I think he's just a little young, but, but I, I do like him. I do like him. I just, I don't, I don't see him doing very well, unfortunately. So that is hope. And, uh, hopefully we're wrong, man, but, uh, that's hope. So next up is Jonathan Leonard. He is from Paradise, Newfoundland, and he's a fisherman. Is this the one that uh, Tina, does Tina know him? Is this the one that Tina knows? Tina doesn't know him, but they're from the same town. Okay, from the same town. Okay. Doesn't so, know him, but they're from the same town? And, wow. Yeah. It's okay. from Tina's hometown. I don't think she lives in Paradise anymore. Okay. Bye. So I'll, I'll go with this guy. I like this guy. This is, this to me is like the sleeper. And I know this is going to sound kind of weird because he's very like plain and, and I don't want to say boring, but I'm going to say as a, as an entertainment side of it. Okay. Uh, he's he seems like a very stand up guy, trustworthy guy. His words is bond. He says he's going to do something. He's going to do it. He's not going to turn his back on you. I think people are going to trust him. Uh, as an entertainer, I'm going to give him like a minus five, which is fine because this is Big Brother and you got to survive. It's a game about winning. I know the viewers want the entertainment and the entertainers. That's great. Uh, but when you're playing, you want to win. And, I, and I'm going to give him a lot of bonus points for that. So as an entertainer, I'm going to say minus five. As a player, I think he has what it takes. <clears throat> he has the right demeanor. Uh, he's a family man. You know, and, and you can tell when he talks. Like if you talk, I, just watching his interview, I trust this guy. So just imagine being in, in a house full of chaotic people. That could be your one person that's like your sense of peace. Like, okay, I can trust him or I can talk to him or maybe I can open up to him a little bit, you know? And and that's how I see this guy. And a player like that is pretty dangerous because I feel like people are going to trust him. They're not going to want to get rid of him. He's going to be good with everybody. I could be way wrong. I could This guy could be the first boot and he goes in and he's just a disaster. I have no idea. Obviously, nobody does. But that's my initial view on this guy is that he's very grounded. I think he's a very respectful, respectful guy. And people are going to respect him uh, and uh, and want to talk to him and, and kind of open up to him. That's my takes on this guy. So that's Jonathan. I like him. I think he's going to do very very well. Uh, Jess, what are your thoughts? Um, look, I love myself a Canadian Thor. I think <laughs> yeah, he has all of the good qualities. Um, there was a. It's weird. I I was honestly very um not say like attracted, not in a like physical sense, but like. He, like he attracted me um there was a guy that looked like him on my on my um finale not on my finale in my season like prior to like during um our f finales or you know our final um, oh like the audition finales. auditions yeah he was there was a guy that looked like him and I said if this guy is in my season I'm totally going to you know want an alliance with him he'd probably be my number one you know there's something about that this I don't consider he he's not like a typical bro. You know what I mean? It's not like the bro bros that like I would typically like go after. He's like one of those softies. He he looks like a like a big guy but like a softie. So it's just kind of like the big brawny guys, the ones that like you said, they they feel they feel comfortable, they feel familiar, they feel trustworthy. Um and he gave me all those vibes when he when he was talking. I think that he would get along with someone like, uh, you know, like Claudia. You know, when I said she'd be like the little sister, I right. feel like he would take her in and be, her, you know, her big bro. You know, this is the type of like relationships that I'm talking about. I think a lot of people would come up to him and and like confide in him in in a lot of different ways because he doesn't feel threatening, even though he's kind of a a threat because he's a big he's a big dude and he talks about you know like wanting to be you know wanting to play um i i really i really like him i think he's gonna be canada's favorite player this year probably um you know very charming and i i really i really like him um he's got good vibes i like him keith what are your thoughts um jess kind of stole my thunder <laughs> uh, with the Canada's favorite player thing. Oh, look at this. Um, I, I Okay, here's the thing. I got to go back in history here. Big Brother Canada Season 9. Uh, myself and Tina walk into the house and instantly we click. We're besties. I love Tina. I love her to this day. This is male Tina. This <laughs> is male age-appropriate um, <laughs> Tina for Kiefer. Uh, I think <laughs> Jonathan and I could potentially be best friends for the rest of our lives um he's a fisherman 
being a fisherman, you have to be uncomfortable and you work long, crazy hours for an extended amount of time. And then you continually do that again and again. That is a skill set not many people walk into the Big Brother house with. Um, fishermen have that. So he's going to understand what it's like to be uncomfortable and having to work long hours or stay up late or fall asleep early. He's going to be okay because he's going to have some of that foundation set from being a fisherman. Um, he's also married. Uh, I think that's going to be a huge asset to his game. It takes the the flirty showmance off the table right away, and instantly you can build a good connection with whoever because you don't have to go through that awkward, uh, do I want to kiss you, do I want to be in love with you type phase uh, on Big Brother. So I think he's already got a leg up on that. And you mentioned Claudia. That was another big point, PEI Newfoundland, that East Coast connection. It's a strong connection they have. It must be from the similar type of tap water or the Atlantic Ocean. I don't know what it is, but they're already <laughs> a strong duo before they've the even water. walked into the house. Um, so I like Jonathan. I think he is my sneaker for Canada's favorite player. And I think he's too kind-hearted and too nice and soft to win this game. But I think he's going to go far, and he could be our fourth place boot. He could join me and Adam Pike and Ika uh, and all the greats uh, who have made it to fourth place in the game. Yeah, I think I think I agree with you with that. I think he's going to go far. I don't know if fourth, maybe maybe so, but yeah, I think he's going to go far. I think he's going to find himself good. I, I like this guy. I, I think we're all in agreement. This guy is is as a if you're looking at him as a player. I know if you're looking at him as like an entertainer, I'm I'm sure everyone's like, what are you guys what are you guys talking about? But if you're looking at it as a player, someone that's going to be able to to live in that house and get along with people and 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 you know make it week after week, I think this guy has high high potential. That's my personal opinion on this guy. So that's Jonathan. I think we all kind of like him. Uh, they both say yeah. Canada's favorite. That's a that's a that's a that's call. Close thing. That's a call, man. Close that's thing. a call. Interesting. I like that. All right. That's Jonathan right there. All right, next we've got John Michael Sosa. We got uh, from Bradford, Ontario, project manager. All right, uh, who didn't go? Let's go with uh, Jess. Jess, what are your oh, thoughts? Me? You want to go? Okay, you want? Oh no, Keith. Let's go, Keith. We'll go, Keith, because you did go first last time. Keefer, John Michael Sosa. I love the name, John Michael Sosa. That's a very powerful name. Um, I think John is going to have the ability to adapt and fit in anywhere, just from like um his couple short you know bio videos the interview with jed i really liked them i thought he's very personable i feel like he's somebody that i would get along with extremely well um you know and like he's a little bit seems like a little bit smaller in stature so for the bros maybe they want to take him in under his wing as well and he can kind of fit in and, and do that but i think also being a fan of the show is is a good mix i'm just uh yeah i got high hopes I got high hopes for John Michael Sosa. And I think it's mainly in part because I just like his name, John Michael Sosa. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he got the middle name in there and all of that. Um, so, yeah, not not too much. Um, I, 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 It's hard to predict, but I would say jury um, or very close to, to jury. Mm, interesting. Jess, yeah, what are your thoughts? He does say he wants to be a floater, so... All right. And I think he might have been the only one who said that he might have want, wanted to be a floater. So I think that's a good – floaters Floaters go deep. They do. Uh, floaters floaters they do. go deep. They do. Jess, what about you? What are your thoughts on John Michael Sosa? I think um, I, I think out of the whole cast, he might be the only other super fan. Maybe – like I think there's only like two actual yeah. super – maybe three actual super three. fans or – like three super fans, he's one of them. Um, you know, I I would kind of agree that I think he he runs middle pack. I think he could make a lot of um, make a lot of friends. He has a personality that's not like too over the top, and it's not you know too docile. So I feel like um, he could probably um, creep into those you know, creep into those alliances. He kind of uh, gives me anybody but me vibes, you know, like, mm -hmm. like he's going to yeah. be as long the, as they're going, the, 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 he's probably going to be the swing vote in a lot of these flips. That's what he kind of gives me. He kind of gives me those vibes. Like he's Definitely. the one who's, yeah, that he's going to be the one who's going to, you know, probably uh, flip on one of his many alliances. 
I like it. That okay. being said, I think he, he probably will make it to, to middle, definitely probably to jury. Um, yeah, I think he, he, he has it very middle pack. So, okay. So here's my thoughts on this guy. All right. I like the three names, John Michael Sosa, like it. Uh, okay. So here's the thing in his interview. I, listen, man, maybe I'm looking too big into these interviews. He's saying he studied the game and he knows which, which, when to throw comps, like what weeks he's going to throw comps or what comp. It doesn't work that way. When you go into Big Brother, you can't go in and say, okay, well, week four, I'm going to have to throw the comp. At, and it's not even week one yet. You're not even in the house yet. You can't. That's not how this works. Big Brother is a very situational game. And, and week by week, things change. Day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, things change. So he's already talking about he knows when he has to throw a comp at what week and what comp. And it makes no sense. What I got out of, the, out of his interviews was he's telling everyone what they want to hear. His answers are what, we, what he thinks that the audience wants to hear year and and i don't know how i feel about that but he is a he is a super fan of the show which could be good could be bad who knows we don't know yet um i think he's gonna do okay though socially i think in a way i think he's gonna i think a lot of people either, i think he's gonna be one of those guys either you're gonna like him or you're not there's no kind of middle ground either you're gonna really like the guy or you're not gonna really like the guy. um i think he has potential i think he has potential uh, it just depends how where the chips fall with alliances and where he fits in it. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I just the interviews. I just I felt like he was telling the audience what he thought we wanted to hear. And usually when you when that happens, it, I just see someone going in and just sitting on the couch and doing nothing. You know, it's it's unfortunate. But I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. But I just I just if you watch his interviews back, I think it was one with Jed and he was. I think it was one with Jed and he was talking about this week you got to throw this and then you do this and that and it's like how are you like you're not you're literally sitting in a hotel room right now. Now, and you're talking about throwing comps at certain times uh, uh, like this comp I got to throw how do you know like are you on the block that week are you not on the block that week is your uh, ally on the block that week or are they t you have no idea so when people start talking like that it's just on paper they understand the game but when they go get thrown into that lion's cage it's a very different story and I think that's what people forget uh, is that you can say what you want in these interviews. Nobody's going to correct you. Nobody's going to stop you. You could be the best player in your own eyes. Once you go in that cage, uh, everyone has the game plan to win. Everyone wants to win. Everyone's there to play the game. So it's not just you, you know? So I don't know. I, I think there's uh, some potential with this guy. I think he has potential to be good. I, I, I like him. I'm going to be, I'm going to actually be cheering for this guy. I do like him. I actually do. And I am going to be cheering for him, but I, I just hope he doesn't do what he was saying in his interviews. I feel like there's hidden potential there somewhere. And I hope he was just, saying what he thought the audience wanted to hear and when he goes in he actually like relaxes and does what he has to do to win i think he has high potential but we'll have to see so that's uh john michael sosa uh i like him i like him but uh i didn't like the interview but i like him i think i think there's a disconnect there somewhere but we'll find it all right john michael sosa okay so next up is Kuzi, I will take this one first. Uh Kuzi is uh victoria british columbia 911 operator I got to tell you right now, this right here is probably my favorite. I'm going to call it right now. This is my favorite, I think. Um, love her personality. I love how she could turn it on and off. She's a 911 operator. She's heard some shit before. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and I love how she can go from being like, you know, partying, dancing, having a good time to turning it. Okay. It's business time, you know? And she's sitting there and now it's like, all right, I got to be serious. She, she has that switch and that's something you really need in the house. You got to know when to turn the switch on and when to turn it off. It's a thing. Some people don't know it's that that switch is always turned on and there's no off switch and it could be problematic uh, for anybody, for anybody. That's just the way it is. It's a problem because it's like, sometimes you got to be chill and, and, uh, and people don't understand that they don't read the room right. Uh, for her, I think she's very smart. Uh, she's absolutely beautiful. I think she's very smart and she knows when to turn it on and off. And I love that about her. I loved her interview. She is my favorite. She is absolutely my favorite this, this year. This is who I'm cheering for. I hope she wins. Can she win? I don't know, but by far, this is my number one, probably the only one. Uh, but this is my number one right here. Koozie. I love you. If you're watching this, um, She's after, after, <laughs> you know, after the season, if you do watch this, uh, yeah, she's in the house right now. Hopefully she's still there. Uh, I just want to say that this is my pick right here. I really, really, really love, love it. I just, I loved what I saw at the, uh, with the, with the bio and just the way she talks and her vibe and her body language and just everything was just, it hit for me. It was just, this is what I look for. And I hope she, I, I hope she delivers. So this is, this is my, this is my pick. Um, who went, uh, Kiefer, I think Kiefer, go ahead. Let's hear it. I can't believe we're agreeing, Bruno. Oh, my I God. I can't believe. No, we're not allowed. I, Change it. So I have 
I have three winner picks, and Koozie is one of them. Oh, see, I only have one, one, and it's Koozie, so I win. You see? Okay, nice. well, I mean, uh, well. No, go for it. Go. at it from more logistical angle. I, <laughs> shout out to BC. Shout out to Victoria, BC. I love the city. Um, you know, I got to root for the for the people in my province uh, because BC usually doesn't have too many uh, people on Big Brother. It's obviously always Ontario dominated. Of course, goes by the populace thing, blah, blah, blah. Um, but we do exist, and um, I, I think with her background um, and being a first responder, it's going to be able for her to not get too caught up in the emotion of Big Brother, which was one of my biggest issues in the game. Um, so I'm hoping Kuzi can go far and find a, a strong alliance. I almost feel like she might attract jealousy, though. Like, people might be jealous of her confidence. Um, so that has me a little nervous, but I think that, you know, she's going to surprise herself in a lot of the comps. And after she gets a couple under her belt, she's going to be like, oh, wow, I can really do this. Um, so I got my winner pick as Koozie as well. Um, I love her. I, I hope that she goes deep. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, Koozie's going to be good. And I can't believe Bruno <laughs> got to go first on Koozie here because uh, I would have said all of this. I have he, was, he wanted that. Uh, Koozie's yeah, my I, pick. Yeah, he, he, he just to took it. He like, just I'm took it right away. I said, listen. Because that's <laughs> Koozie or bus. Koozie or bus for him. Yeah. That's what it is. This is it. Yeah, this is I, all. She's 29 years old. I think that's a really great age. I think a, a lot of the past winners have been around that 28 to 31 range. So it's kind of in that middle ground of, of where you need to be to win Big Brother. So I think she's going to do uh, extremely well. So done. Nice I would said. Hope. Jess. Who's he? Oh, I, look, I we're all three of us are going to be in agreement for the first time in our lives. I think that it they wow. Kuzi is definitely a front runner. Um, what I see in Kuzi, like I mean, obviously she's gorgeous, like gorgeous, stunning. So I really am hoping that there is that that's not the case, uh, Kiefer, with you know the jealousy. Although I can kind of I can kind of see it. I don't think I really got any. Caddy, well, at this point, Caddy vibes from any of the girls, but you know, knock on wood. Um, I see her as yeah, there there's something about her very calming. I don't know if it's her accent. I don't know if it's it's her a, a combination of her accent, her demeanor, like she just feels smart, which in a way I think could be a threat for her because she's just so composed. And I feel like a lot of people will look at that and see the confidence and think that she's just running the show. Um, mm. So that's a little concerning, but she, I see her, like she, she says she's, she likes those big personalities. So I'm really hoping that her and Daniel, you know, hit it off and that's his good sis. And that's, you know, her BFF and, you know, they, you know, she can take a lot of what he might know on a, you know, um, on a super fan level and that they really kind of like trust each other and like confide, you know, in each other to kind of take, uh, you know, take it as far as they can. That's my personal wish. But, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I love everything about her. I think one of the things that she said that just seemed so not not smart, but probably the smartest that we'll find in this group of people that she said that within her alliances, she wants to be able to kind of switch from one to the other, but she's going to look at these relationships um, and see what they have to offer to propel her forward. And I don't like, and that was like a little, little glimpse of like her strategic sense of like where she's looking at these, the cast on a strategic level of like to better herself and she's already got the manifestation down she already said i'm winning this i'm, I'm this is this is mine so i love i love everything about her really. yeah i'm with you i think we, we finally all agree it took like you know 25 house guests but we got there uh no it's 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 good you know i i like it. i think i i love her i absolutely love her uh yeah you you, you all nailed it you know just Per, the, this to me is is all my eggs are in this basket right here for me. This is this is the this is what's gonna make me watch the show. All right, so uh, that is Koozie. We love her, and uh, we hope you do too. All right. Next we have Renee. She is from Vaughn, Ontario, a law student. Um, all right, Jess. Renee is all yours. Why do I get her first? You want me to take Renee? My no, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be very quick. So. <laughs> Okay, like, sorry, not sorry, nothing against you. In the words of Bruno, um, <laughs> um, 
what is it? No disrespect. No, no, no. Uh, what do you say? <laughs> no disrespect. No disrespect. No, no disrespect. <laughs> yeah. No disrespect, um, but with all actually in yeah, with all the Bruno, with all due respect. Yeah, with all due this respect. This is me first boot vibes all the way. I'm sorry, girl. You talked, and within like the first. 30 seconds i wanted to kick you out of the house yeah it was just it was wild like the girl was talking a thousand miles a minute she was just all she was doing was like laughing giggling like she had this weird i don't know it was just it it was very off-putting it was just like too much energy but you know what at the same time i kind of want to give her the benefit of the doubt because i also thought like spicy v was kind of like that in her beginning like uh bios like she was just so full of energy and all over the place i want to give her the benefit of the doubt and saying like he's a law student so maybe <laughs> you know maybe there's something there that th these bios d did not capture you know right. she she was kind of she kind of saw Judd and maybe she just got super giggly and excited, you know, all of a sudden just from the pure vibes. We all, you know, we've all been there. I, I think my, my, my pre, you know, my pre-interviews did not really show who I was. So we're right. taking this That's as true. a grain of salt. Yep. But mm -hmm. if she comes in with that same exact energy, I'm, I fear for her. And And she said some good things. Like she said, she she wanted a girls alliance and i'm the kind of girls like yay for the girls alliance if you can get that together but i think a lot of girls that would want to be in a girl alliance would probably not want her in it like right she just seems like a like a like a loose lip that sinks ships you know here's the thing i i i, I agree with you on that and she wanted the girls alliance which is great uh, but I think there's a lot of singles in the house with a lot of showmances going on. And it's pretty hard to have an all girls alliance if there's a lot of showmances going on, right? Because mm -hmm. emotions get put into play and all that stuff. I, I, I'm with you, man. I, I like her. Like, I think on a, again, on a personal level, this is never personal. I think she's a really nice girl. She seems very sweet, very, you know, kind hearted. Uh, in the house, I don't know, man. I mean, it's it was a lot. Like the the interview, and and uh, you know, she had like what I call verbal diarrhea. It just kept going. Da -da 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 -da. One minute she's talking about her toes, then all of a sudden, like in the same <laughs> breath, she's talking about craft dinner and like, how did you even get there? Like you, we were just talking about, like how did you? What did what did, you don't like? You're talking about the people you don't like. Yeah. <laughs> about her mom and her dad and yeah her, yeah it was just so random and her toe and it's just like she just is toe. talking to talk and it's almost like she feels like she has to keep talking and it's almost like a like a defensive mechanism i don't know what it is man but it's like she always just felt like she had to just keep spewing words out of her mouth that didn't make any sense and uh i don't know if people put up with that in the house man it's like it's one of those things that people are like oh my god that's a, that's a lot you know and, and i'm sure she's a sweet girl and, and uh, there's no disrespect you know with all due respect but i think she uh but i think she uh I think she talks her way out the door like early, like early, like that. I say is pre-jury. I think I think Renee is pre-jury. That's that's my call. I think she talks her way out the door. Uh, man, I tell it was a lot, and like I say, it's just it was just blah, 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 you know what I mean. So, and I do the same thing. So I'm guilty of it too. I, I have verbal diarrhea too. So, but uh, but yeah, and and I like how you said too, uh, Jess, about you know Spicy V in her interview, and and these are these are bio interviews. They could be way off, guys. Like when they go in the house, maybe she chills down and chills out a little bit. Maybe she mellows out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like this is just off the off of a minute and a half. Bio bio we're watching so we could be extremely off all of us we don't know just as well as nobody else knows and we don't know until they get in the house so i'm with you on that 100 percent, jess i think she talks way out the door Kiefer, what are your thoughts yeah i'm definitely getting a bit of pre-jury vibes um again pretty young 24 years old i think she might be the youngest uh, female in the cast um so barring you know maybe she does get into a showmance that can take her a bit further and her partner becomes a target Type deal. I will speak on Spice. Spice knew her personality was a lot, and she would take breaks from everybody and hang out by herself. And that was like part of her strategy was to like not be in everybody's face all the time. So she would literally just leave, and she would just refold her clothes. We thought she was counting her days, but she was just folding her clothes. Um, so yeah, Spice was very self aware about her personality, and if Renee has that same type of awareness of where it can be too much. Um, because you know, living with people, he, he's, the littlest things start to drive you crazy, and it happens very quick in Big Brother. Um, so if she can find that self awareness, I see her going middle of the game ish. But uh, yeah, I, I think uh, you guys 
touched on everything. I, I, I would agree with both of you. Yeah, and that's the thing is sometimes people will take the littlest thing, the smallest thing, and, and blow it up to get them targeted. And it could be, oh, she just talks too much. And someone's like, yeah, she does talk a lot. Well, let's get her out. She's annoying. Okay, cool. And then it, it goes like that. Like, it could be something like that. So, yeah. Um, I like her. Uh, on, a, on, a, on a personal level, I think she sounds really sweet. She's a law student, you know, and I uh, hope she does well, good things in life. But I think we're going to be talking to her very soon. She'll be watching with the rest of us. So that's my take on Renee. Here we have Roberto Lopez. He's from Toronto, Ontario. Gym manager. A lot of people from Toronto. Um, Kiefer, what are your thoughts on uh, Mr. Roberto? Roberto. Um <sighs> Another gym manager, another fitness. I think he's going to fall into the bro category. Um, potentially targeted early, might win some comps early. Uh, I don't know if he's going to have the prowess to go deep into the game. Uh, I, I don't know how big of a fan he was before You know, he signed up to be on Big Brother Canada, which could bite him in the end. But I, I, I just don't have high hopes. And if I were to guess, I actually have Roberto down as first boot uh, as one of my pre uh, first boot um picks so yeah i don't know i did the vibe for me was just like he was just very calm seemed like he didn't really care type deal but maybe you guys seen something different but i mean that's honestly all i can really say gym manager like he's just gonna want to work out he's gonna work out with everybody everybody's gonna want to work out that's what everybody does in their first couple days in the house everyone's like we need to get a good workout and blah 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 um obviously not my game <laughs> me neither there, buddy don't worry so, <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see what's up it's a good i think it's a good take on him for me personally i think roberto's i think he's a really nice guy like he, he when if i remember it correctly we watched this last night i haven't watched the video since last night but if i remember i think he was like a he just seems like a really genuinely good person uh he's fit nice guy i think again he's in over his head. does i don't think he has that 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 bone in his body to do the moves he's got to make um, I could be wrong. I kind of, I kind of already forget him a little bit. I'm not going to lie, but like this, I like this guy. Like I like him on a personal level. I think he's just a really genuine, nice guy. Uh, but not built for the game. I don't think, I think he's going to get played. I think he's going to get played pretty hard. And, uh, but yeah, just like a really nice, he's just, just like a, yeah, Jim bro. There's other, a couple of Jim bros in there. I'm sure they're going to connect. I just, I hope we don't see, and no disrespect to the pretty boys. They were one of the, the, the greatest alliances, if not the best alliance ever in big brother Canada. I just don't want to see it again. It was done. You know, good for them. They did an awesome job. All respect to them. I don't want to see it again. It was a very, very uh, boring season because of it. And I just hope that we don't see that with like the gym bros coming together and just running away with it. Hopefully not. So I like him. I don't think he understands the game very much. And uh, I think he's he's just going to be a likable guy, but disposable kind of thing. And, uh, you know, he'll be there. And then when his time is up, he's gone. I don't, I don't see him making any crazy moves. Um, I don't know. I just, it just seems just normal, like a normal guy, you know, nothing, nothing too, uh, too much to talk about. What do you think, Jess? Um, yeah. Um, all those things, you know, um, I'm just gonna, I want to say Roberto. That's it. Roberto. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> he, um, really weird. He was giving me like Nico vibes. So, mm. you know, he, I, again, with half of this cast, think way over, I think they're way over their heads. I, I could potentially see, I mean, I think he'd be part of the bros, right? But at this point, like, the four bros that he would probably be a part of, like, none of them have watched, like, a full, ep like, a full season of Big Brother between the four of them. So right. I think that they would be extremely horrendous in uh in a strategic in on a strategic level right. um with all due respect you know <laughs> that just wanted to just make sure i have nothing against them just with all due respect there's there's nothing there um yeah he was very average you know i feel like he's gonna be pre-jury i feel like it, one could um uh, pull pull something over on him uh there's Unless he gets into some type of relationship, all of them are are game for for romances at this time. At this point, you know, all of them are showmans ready. So, um, I don't know. There was just nothing super uh, special about him. He's very he's very calm. Yeah, uh, I feel like any kind of twist that would come in, he just feels like he would self evict. 
that's just like the type of feeling <laughs> I get from him. Yeah, I just, I feel like. Nico vibes. He gives me Nico vibes. I, I feel like he's just. You know, I, hey, Canada hates me. I want to get out of yeah. here. You know, I just feel like he's a normal guy. Like he just doesn't know what he's getting into. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. He's just like just a normal, just regular guy walking no, down the street. Like, I don't know. And, and this is, again, with all due respect for people who love the gym, because obviously I'm not one of them. My husband goes to the gym a lot, so I'd be probably disrespecting him when I say this. Like there's just certain people that just, he lives in a gym. Like this is his life, right? So mm-hmm. A, we all know like in Canada, or not in Canada, but in Big Brother in general, you don't have the light of day right. and you don't have the the equipment necessary to work out in the sense that you usually would or the time. Sometimes they close out, you know, certain aspects. I don't know if you guys have like an actual yep. gym or an area where you. It's like a little station, but it's, yeah, there's not. I know that on my season, we had several gym rats. And they ended up getting massive depression, uh, aside from all of the other stuff they were withdrawing from. But, not, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just a subtle, just slid that right in. Just. Don't do that. Yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> I love it. Again, with all due respect. With all due respect. You said it, it's fine. All due respect. All due respect. No, it is a serious thing. Like, um, this, you know, like, Jim gives you endorphins and all that. And as you stop, which these guys go hardcore, and there will be a time where they really do stop, their personalities change. They end up getting, you know, they t- change into completely different people. Depression kicks in. Sometimes that's their you know, their coping mechanism, right? We all have different coping mechanisms and they, um, and then you have a situation like Nico where you're trying to self-evict because something, you know, some shit went down. Right. So that's, that's just like the kind of feels I yeah. get with him. So great guy, Roberto, like he, he's my Latin brother. So <laughs> like, to, you know, say I'm, I'm rooting and hoping that that's not the case. It's just the vibe that I get. Yeah, I'm with you. I think I, I'm with you. I think we're this guy is just, this guy's just kind of whatever kind of thing. Hopefully, hopefully, he cha- it, you know, we can change our mind. But yeah, you know. All right, that's uh, Roberto. Roberto. Next, we have Santina, who is from Edmonton, Alberta. Esthetician. I can't say that word. Esthetician. Esthetician. She's an esthetician. So okay, I'll go first here. I like Santina. I do like Santina. Um, I kind of have high hopes. She didn't say too much in the interview. She was very kind of quiet. So we don't know too much about her. The interview was pretty short. She kind of just gave short answers, said what she had to. I think she's okay. I just, I, I hope she can, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I hope she can fit in well. I don't know. I don't know. I just, something about her. I liked her. I love, beautiful smile. I think she has personality. I like her. Bubbly. Um, this is another one of the ones that I'm, uh, uh, this is one of the other players I'm kind of uh, cheering for. And, um, I don't know. Not, honestly, not a whole lot to say. To be very honest with you, the interview was kind of just blah kind of thing, but it was very short. Nothing, no information. I don't know if she watches the show, but something about her, it makes me want to cheer for her. I like her. Um, yeah, that's, I really have no information why I like her. I just, I like her. Something about her is like, yes, cheer for her. I like her. Uh, that's me. Uh, Kiefer, what are your thoughts on uh, Santina? Really like Santina. Um, I think she has a chance to be Canada's favorite player as well. Um, I loved her interview. Um, I like the fact that she wants to stay low key until she needs to be. I think staying low key is an art in Big Brother. And if you can do it, you can paint yourself all the way into the finals. And if, you know, you, you can gain respect by just going deep into the game. So I got high hopes. She's Métis Indigenous. So I've got to root for Santina. Uh, she can bring another level to the game that uh, Indigenous people are dying for. It sucks that she's the only one in there. Uh, in fact, it's unbelievable. How could we be in a country where the Indigenous population is underrepresented on a show that is supposed to represent us? To me, that makes absolutely no sense. And it is the biggest crime in reality television history that the Indigenous population has not been fully represented on Big Brother. Because I've seen the impacts that I had in my communities and my country. And not only in my country, but in America, Australia, New Zealand, wherever Indigenous people's lives, we all have the same hopes and dreams united. And it is to be elevated because we're a colonized people. And we just need our story 
stories to be told in any form. And Big Brother has an opportunity to do that. Yet, we only have one here on the season. Last year, we were spoiled with Josh and Jay. This year, we have Santina. So, the Indigenous community is definitely going to show up and show out for her. Um, but I just think it's a huge oversight. I'm extremely disappointed and hurt. Uh, a little bit even just speaking on it right now that we're underrepresented just because of the impact that i seen myself have and then josh and jay last season as well um josh is a children's doctor jay is in, in theater he's doing great things and they're they're both great role models um even though jay was a first boot still had a huge impact on the indigenous community and it's just something that our indigenous people need and and are are clamoring for so a huge oversight Rooting for Santina, Canada's favorite player. I think she's going to go deep. I think she's going to get backstabbed by being a little bit too trusting. And those are my predictions for Santina. But I loved her interviews. I thought she was so funny. I like that call on Canada's favorite. I'm I, I'm with you on that. I, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, like I said, I like her too. I like her too. Jess, talk to us. Well said, by the way, Keith. Well said. Got it. I know. Yeah. I very get. well. Very well said, Keith. Like I um, I very much understand the the need to be, want to be represented and um. And she, well, she's, you know, she's a gorgeous girl. Unfortunately, I didn't get a good sense of who she was because her, you know, her answers were just so, so quick. And I'm mm -hmm. really, um, I'm really hoping it's, um, it's not how she acts in the house per se, because I feel like the, a lot of the people in the house are, very outgoing and they're very like they, i mean she was probably the shortest i think maybe the the shortest uh bio you know for yeah. her questions just mm -hmm. very quick and to the point and i feel some people might see that as her being a little sketchy um you know when you're kind of like that either introverted or you know you're not giving enough information people are are a lot less likely to trust you um overall like i just in comparison to everybody else's energy she was kind of like right down here you know That's a very good point but but i but i really i really liked her and i really want you know to like to like her she just wasn't giving enough that's a very good point you so, said, Jess. That's a very good point because you're right. Mm -hmm. What if she, you know, like turtles up? I don't know the better word for it. Kind of gets, you know, and doesn't connect with people. We've seen that before in Big Brother where it's like somebody in the outside world might be full of energy or whatever it is. You know, they might be but then once they go in this uncomfortable situation, they kind of turtle up and they don't get along with people. They don't have these conversations they need to have and they immediately become the outcast simply because they just they're just uncomfortable in, in the environment that they're in and they don't, you know, they don't open up. And you know, and now that you say that I can, I could kind of almost see it, you know, because you're right. She had the short, quick answers. Everyone else is kind of out there like, yeah, da, da. but maybe it's mm -hmm. just, maybe she's just calm, cool, collected, you know, maybe she's just kind of, that's the way she is and she'll be fine when she gets in there. We, we don't know, but, but I like that you said that that's kind of, um, that's kind of a good, uh, insight there that it's like, Hopefully she doesn't just turtle up when she gets her. Cause I do like her and I do have high hopes for her. And, and, and she is one of the ones I'm cheering for. I'm only, there's a few people that I like in the, I shouldn't say like, but there's a few people that I'm cheering for in the season and she is one of them. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully that's not the case. Jess, hopefully she can fit in and, and open up a little bit, but I can totally see what you're saying. And she was very, just kind of short answers, quick, kind of to the point, uh, which could be good, but I think she's uh, beautiful. I like her. Uh, she seems very fun and, uh, I wish her luck. I hope she does well. All right, so that is Santina. All right, so we have Shania, 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 Shania Carter, uh, twenty-seven year old, twenty-seven years old from Victoria, British Columbia, which is Kiefer's neck of the woods, and uh, she's a bartender. Okay, who wants this? Jess, do you want to go with Shania? Um, yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, love the, love the tats. She's kind of a little, she's a little baddie, right? I feel like she's got little baddie vibes. Um, it's very interesting. Like, I wanna, wanna like her. Um, and at the same time, she gives me early boot vibes because I feel a lot of girls are not gonna get along with her. Um, just because she, out of all of the females, I feel like she probably has the more like um, I don't know how to ex I had to explain it, but I feel like she has the more masculine. She has more masculine energy, 
that is so like she'll get along with the boys kind of thing men like i feel like she's she's a guy's girl yeah you know like i feel yeah. like she's rolling with the boys yeah, yeah yeah um which you know could be great but for a girl's girl i mean a girl's girl but you know what i mean like a girl that wants the guys out will look at her as a potential a potential threat um because i feel like she would get along with a lot a lot of the dudes i feel like she would get along with the bros i yep. feel like she um yeah so this she gives me but i i really like her i like her vibe i do like i would get along with her if i was in you know if i was in the house but I would also be able to see that she's not someone that could really hide under the radar. She's right. not an under the radar kind of girl. Not I even think close. She'd be targeted pretty early. Yeah. So I'll I'll uh, I'll say I I her on a pers her personality by far my favorite. Like I love her personality wise. Again on the outside world. This is we're talking real world. She's my favorite. Like I. I can't wait to, I mean, hopefully, you know, she can stay in there for a while, but can't wait to, to, to meet her after, hang out with her after, chat with her. She's a gamer. She likes anime. She's like, you know, she's into all that stuff. I love that stuff. So I think we have a lot in common that way. I think she has a really good personality. You see her in her bio. She's wearing like a, a literally like a shit costume, like a, like a, like a, like a shit emoji <laughs> costume and, and she can laugh at herself. And I love that. I love people that can laugh at themselves and have fun and just, you know, they don't give a shit, you know? Uh, and I love that. I love that about her. I think she is going to be a train wreck in that house. I think she's going to be an absolute disaster with all due respect. I love her. Like she is my favorite. She is my favorite house guest in the cast, like outside the house, but that we're not talking outside the house. Okay. Like I can't wait to hang out with her, chat with her, play games with her, whatever it is like this. I love her like love, love, love. Okay. Oh God. But if I'm talking big brother, yikes. Okay. We're talking the game here. Yo, I, but, but like what Jess said, I think she is like, you know, she's the kind of girl probably gets along with the guys. She gets along more with guys than she does girls kind of thing. Right. So I think she's going to kind of fit in there, but I also feel like, you know, the boys are going to be the boys and she might be like kind of the, 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 uh, disposable and to say, it, you know, with a lack of a better word, but, uh, if the boys stay strong, you know, it might be like that. And, and, and so, I don't know. I just, I love her. I think she's incredible. Love her personality. She, you know who she reminds me of? Emily from season five. That's who she reminds mm -hmm. me of, you know? That's who she reminds yeah. me of. Emily from season five. And I loved Emily. I loved her. We got along in the house. And I love her very much. So, it's like, that's who she reminds me of. I, I think she's a great person. I don't think she's made for this show. I think she's going to go in and just, I don't know. It depends on on where, where the connections are. But, I just don't see her as a good player whatsoever, unfortunately. And I, I'm sorry if you watch this after. I, I you know, I, I love you, but I just don't see it. I don't see it. Prove me wrong. Please prove me wrong. I just don't see it. Uh, Keith, for your thoughts. Thoughts. I know somebody who knows her. Um, so Ooh, I got a okay. bit of details. And yes. she's just um, a loud, outgoing party girl is the description uh, that I got someone who doesn't take shit lightly. Like she don't take like if she if someone is coming at her, she's gonna come back at you ten times harder, which is like probably a good prediction on Bruno's part. Um, from what I've seen, um, or from what I've heard, rather, um, one of my friends worked with her at a fishing lodge. Um, and they weren't like working closely, but they would, you know, everybody parties at the end of the night once your shift is done. Um, so yeah. So I'm rooting for her, but yeah, Emily vibes big time. That's crazy that you say that. Um, yeah, so, and I got to root for BC, so I'm hoping she goes deep into the game. There is a lot of, like, the thing is, if you look at the cast, everyone's from Toronto. Everybody's yeah. from Toronto. It's crazy. It's like, but here's the thing, and I'll tell you guys firsthand, when when they do the casting, they don't care where you're from. Like, they don't care. I remember when I when I auditioned for season three, and I said, I want to be the first one from Ottawa, and they and, and the guy literally looked me in the eyes and goes, I don't give a shit where you're from. Like, he doesn't care. They don't, they're from the States. They don't give a shit. They don't know. They just, they want good people, so... They're all from Toronto. They're all from Toronto. It's just the way it goes. So uh, this is uh, Shania. And uh, like I said, I, I oh, man, I, I hope she does well. But I, I feel like she's going to be a disaster. I feel, I feel like we're going to have a really fun time slamming some beers during finale. Oh, yeah. You no. Know? Yeah. She's probably going to be, you know, maybe pre-jury. So we'll be able to hang out with her before. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be talking to her soon, I think. Out. I think we'll be talking to her pretty soon, but yeah, I hope not. I, I love her. Like she is by, like, she's my favorite like 
personality wise by far nobody even comes close she's my favorite for sure all right so that's shania yeah i like her but i you know some people are you know i don't know maybe i hope she proves me wrong that's shania uh good luck good luck here we have terrell ty mcdonald uh, from Toronto, Ontario, and a personal trainer. So here we have another personal trainer. We have a, there's like two or three of them in the house. I think they're both from Toronto as well. So um, I'll start. I'll start with them. Why not? So uh, with 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 Terrell or with with Ty, he um, he's a personal trainer from Toronto. There's another personal trainer from Toronto. That right there is a common denominator that'll break the ice. Okay. Um, one thing I always say, like say if I say if, let's say I take the bus to work. And I go in the house and I see my bus driver in the house. That's just one of those connections you can make and you stretch it to make it work. Like, hey, you know, we're, you're my bus driver, da-da-da. And then you start working together and you become instant friends or whatever. You, 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 you take these little, you know, vines as they come, you know. The fact that they're both from Toronto, they're both personal trainers. They obviously have similar interests. They're going to get along. Maybe. That's the way I see it. I see them getting along really well. I feel like they're going to be boys. Uh, who was the other one? Was it Roberto or was it, who was the other personal trainer from Toronto? Is it Roberto? Roberto's the, the gym Roberto. Or the yeah. gym worker. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, manager, I could see, gym manager. I could see them getting along just simply because they have the same occupation, similar interests, stuff like that. I really like this guy. The problem with this guy is, and he admits it is, uh, he's got like a weak spot for, you know, uh, girls, he's got a weak spot and it's going to derail him. but he was in the military. He seemed very, you know, respectful. He seems like he's, uh, put together. Well, he's a very good looking guy. He's chiseled, you know, he's, he's got, a, he's got the look. He's good. I think he has uh, a good person, not personality, but good mannerisms. He seems respectful like that. Uh, trustworthy. He almost seems like trustworthy. Uh, but again, there's a lot of very, very, very beautiful, uh, ladies in the house. And, and I think if that's his weak spot, that's his kryptonite. There's a lot of kryptonite in that house. That's the thing, right? If that's what his, that's what his weakness is. Well, there's a lot of them in there that are just absolutely stunning and everyone's looking for a showman. So where does that fit into his game? If he can kind of like stay focused on the game, I think he has the right demeanor and, and, and just, he just, I, I like him. I like him a lot. I just, uh, that, that, that weakness, I think is a big weakness, especially with this cast. We just, we were just talking about Shania and, and, uh, Santina. They're like beautiful ladies and, and all of them, you know? Uh, so I don't know. It's a, th that is the big X factor for me is can he keep his head in the game or is he going to get distracted and, and fall apart? You know, that's a big X factor, but he obviously is going to be one of the guys I think is a bro. He's going to be part of the, you know, um, pretty boys 2.0, whatever you want to call it. Um, who knows, but that's my prediction on this guy. I like him. He has a big hole in his game where it's, uh, you know, his kryptonite, but, uh, yeah, I like him. I do like him a lot. Uh, Jess, what do we think about, uh, Ty? Um, yeah, everything that you said, Bruno, like, look, um, it's interesting, right? Because I feel like when they cast, they cast a lot of stereotypes and like, this is just the stereo, you know, the stereotype that we've seen in many different, uh, you know, seasons, like you said, pretty boys, but, um, I mean, this is like a Tishan 2.0, like to me, like not only is his name Ty, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> but he's, a, you know, personal chair, he's a mama's boy, like this yeah. is like tied to a T and then he's looking for a bromance or a showman's. And then you got Hope over here, like, talking it up to Jed, saying he's going to be like, Jed, I see this as, like, a duo, a very powerful duo, both from, you know, similar parts of Ontario and just, like, uh, yeah. being like, you're my boy, this is it, we're locking it down, bam, you've got the, you know, you've got them too. Um, and then it's going to kind of, they're going to find a, you know, a bed. <laughs> they're going <laughs> to so many beautiful girls and they're gonna find you a know they're it. gonna find a, a throuple you know and then you know who knows that daniel comes into that mix and tries to you know tries to align with them like this is in if i feel like it writes itself almost you know that being said because that's with all due respect i think that he is a great guy and i'm gonna keep on using that actually that phrase, <laughs> it works you know it works it works it I, softens I the blow. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but but you're right. This this is no like no offense. I don't know these people. Yeah. Right. We don't know them. This is just our what what we think, um, mm -hmm. and and how we know that casting is thinking about this. I think that that's what they're looking. You know that they're that's what they're looking to recreate in a very weird way. Yeah. Um, yeah. They 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 literally cast this guy to fail. 
I will say that. I think that they're like, what? You love to fall in love? What? You love beautiful women here. We're going to stick you in a group of, you know, of six of them, you know, um, because two of them are unavailable due to being married or whatever, but you have of your choosing because all of them want to be in romance. In, right. In, in showmances. And he's going to be... He's gonna be screwed. <laughs> they're be- they're so- everyone's so beautiful in this cast. So they are, they're yeah. gorgeous. Poor guy. That they they, they saw his they weakness. Yeah, he saw that the, they saw his weakness, and they're like, "All right, they're gonna double down and put six or eight or you know whatever it yeah. is." But <laughs> yep. All right, Keith, what are your thoughts on Ty? Uh, I have Ty as one of my winner picks. Uh, Ooh, um, hot take. Hot yeah, take. it's a hot take. take. Um, he was giving me the Sean two point vibes. The thing that I really liked about him is there was a thing that says, uh, what are you going to miss? Or what's going to be the hardest thing about, you know, this Big Brother experience? And he said, uh, not being able to tell my mom, good morning, I love you, have a great day. To me, to show that kind of vulnerability and be kind of a mama's boy is going to be a huge gift in this house. I could see him getting along with everybody in there. And if he doesn't come off as too much of a comp threat, he can float through the first half of the game and come in strong through the second half. Uh, I'm hoping him and Koozie team up. That's just a dream of mine. And then, you know, maybe hope as well. Maybe it's like the Jed LaToya and Tashawn 2.0 type deal. Look out for each other and get through this game and navigate it. I would love to see it. Um, but I think Ty has what it takes to go all the way. Of course, being in the Army again, I think is you an upper hand of being told what to do because for a lot of us like that's the hardest part of big brother i know it was for me is like these people telling me like yo Kiefer, you can't use the bathroom for like another two hours because you got to hang out in the olg room until this pov comp is done i was like i'm gonna piss all over this floor (laughs) brother like you can't tell me what to fucking do yeah yeah. um so that shit like weighed hard on my mind i think ty's gonna be a lot better at that aspect of the game so i got high hopes for ty i think He's my front runner in my mind to win this game. I like it. Yeah, I, I like him a lot too. Not seeing that. And he has uh, like he has that military background, the discipline. I mean, we we, we assume right. Um, the, the, like I said, the big X factor to me is the relation, the, the 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 whole you know weakness he said he had. That's a big weakness, and especially we all know we're, we've been locked in that house for a while. All of us have. We know how you know how tough it is in there, and especially you know single guys, single girls. You know things happen, man. So um, I like it. I like him a lot. I definitely like him a lot. He's one of my favorites. I don't know if he has what it takes to win. I hope so, but I, I, I don't know. He's definitely one that I'm rooting for, uh, for sure though. So that is Ty. We all like him. Very, uh, you know, handsome, beautiful smile, good build, uh, respectful mama's boy. We all respect the good mamas. I'm a big mama's boy myself. So, you know, I love to see it whenever I see the, you know, they're like, yeah, you know, like, like you said, Keith, I'm glad you brought that up when he says the first thing I do in the morning, that, that, that was awesome, man. I really got a lot of respect for that. So, yep. That's our boy, Ty. Uh, I like him and uh, good luck. All right. So our next one is Vanessa. She is from Calgary, Alberta, and she's a yoga instructor. Okay. So, Kiefer, I'm coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> why are we laughing? Yeah, why did you laugh? Why did you laugh? Um, so, being the eldest in a season is always a detractor, I think, um, for first for, for, for first view. Uh, I got to lean on my experience of dealing with Tina. Tina shared that because she was the oldest in the house, that she was scared she was going to be the first gone just because of her age. And I think that's a very real fear to have. This cast is a bit more mature, but I don't know how Vanessa's going to play. Wild card. Absolute wild card. If you had to, you gun to my head saying, who's going to be the first boot? I'm probably going to pick Vanessa. That's what I'm going to pick. Do I hope she goes far? Yes. Calgary. It is in Ontario. So I got to cheer a little bit harder for Calgary than everybody from Ontario. Um, so wait, wait, I'm in Ontario. You know that, right? I've been. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know I'm from Ontario. Yeah, right? it's fine. It's well, fine. I'm Good. from Ontario. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I'm nervous for this one. I, I think, you know, being a yoga instructor, maybe she's going to be leading yoga, could come off to as too much um and she's got the most life experience so she definitely has the most stories you know what i mean 
Um, so I'm worried that she might be sharing a little bit too much at times, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm nervous for Vanessa. Yeah. Uh, Jess thoughts on Vanessa. Yeah. Um, I, I, I feel, uh, keeper on this and I would agree if not first boot, um, definitely in the first couple weeks. Um, uh, look, <laughs> Um, with all due respect. There it is. <laughs> with, with all due respect. Um, she's a walking contradiction. I don't I don't understand her. Um, it's uh, you know, she's a yoga instructor, but in her bio she kind of states that people would describe her as being able to pick a fight with nobody in the room, which is like major red flags to me because it's kinda like, how are you picking a fight? How how are you starting a fight with absolutely nobody if this is how people are describing you and you're a yoga teacher and you're the oldest person like this uh nothing about it makes sense to me she's also not that old y'all she's my age like i this this and like so in even though Kiefer said that it's an older it's an older cast like a little or a more mature cast you know um her her strategy is kind of being like the mom and the auntie and you're not even like you're like 10 years older you know to be 10 years older in a really weird way is is not to be someone's mom like i don't like you have to be like in your 50s you know in your late yeah. 40s and your early like 50s mid 50s to be giving someone mom vibes she doesn't give me mom vibes even though she's a mom, like she's not giving me like, let me, tr let, let me like divulge my secrets. Let me find this, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, let me be tight with you. She doesn't give me those vibes. So like, uh, and then like, she has that weird, she, like probably the, the weirdest, uh, kink, not kink. What is it called? Uh, her pet peeve, which is like, if she sleeps with a person in her bed, like mm. if she's sharing a bed she needs to have her pillows with the outside facing in, in or something yeah in like or or it, or she's going to like you know or she's going to say something which means that something that small can right. really just by her saying something like that too early on which the first day people are yeah. going to be like this girl's too much yeah like where <laughs> is she coming from like no let's get out like this I is I feel you on that. I feel you on that. I feel like sometimes like, yeah, little things like that. Like, I'm glad you said that just like that. <clears throat> I was going to say the same, similar thing. It's like when you, if something that small bothers you, there's so, first of all, there's a lot of small things that are, that are going on in the house that are going to bother you, but the big stuff, you're not going to be able to handle it. Like Rish, I'm going to use Rish as a perfect example. Rish was 42 when she was on season three with me and uh, she couldn't handle some of the stuff and she was upset like picking up after the kids and she's like i'm not here to be anybody's mother and like stuff like that well then don't like and the thing with this group with, with, uh, with vanessa she's saying like oh well my strategy is i'm gonna like i'll cook for them and i'll do their laundry and i'll rub what the fuck what are you doing like don't go in there to do rub people's backs and do their laundry like that shit doesn't work man like what are you doing you know so uh i just i felt like the, the interview with jed and no disrespect to her i think she's like uh, first of all uh, I think one, she's absolutely stunning. And two, I feel like the interview with Jed is what really turned it for me. Uh, it was very awkward. I don't know if she was just, maybe she was just very nervous, which it could have been maybe her yeah. nerves. I don't know. But if she was nervous sitting in front of Jed, like, especially in the first week, everyone's looking for that easy, like that's the person we're taking out. And if you're having conversations, like if, if the way she was having conversations with Jed is any indication how she's going to be having conversations in the house, she is 100% the first boot. Period. If she's going up and being awkward and just like, uh, hey, hey, she's not going to connect with anybody. Week one is very, connections are very, very, very important week one because that's what's going to keep you safe if people win. If nobody's talking to you and, 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 and it's very awkward, like especially week one when people don't know each other, like trying to start that conversation can be very awkward. People just stand in front of you and it's like, uh, hi. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it can be awkward. So, if the indica if the if the interview with Jed was any indication of how her she is socially, I'm I'm worried for her. I really I really am because uh, I'd like to see how she plays. I just I I'm with you. I think she's the first boot. I I don't see her lasting long at all. Uh, if she's not the first boot, I think she's going to go very far because I think people will carry her to the end. I think she will 
um, rub people the wrong way a little bit. Like the way she was even talking about how she goes through her kids' phones. Sure, go through your kids' phones, do whatever. But the way she was saying it, I don't know. It was, it was just something was off about it, you know. And it just, uh, I feel like she's gonna miss the mark socially. Big time. I think she's going to miss the mark socially. I think she's going to miss her kids. I think there's going to be a lot of X factors in there. Mm. I think she's going to have a really tough go. I think the first week uh, she's going to have she's going to have a really 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 tough time. That's my call on it. I've seen it before, and I, that's my call. I think she's going to have a really tough go week one, possibly out the door, most likely. And uh, we'll be talking to her soon. But uh, I, I do wish her all the best. But I just I don't see it, man. But I, I hope she can I do well. I really hope she doesn't <clears throat> tell anybody that she goes through her kids' films. I think that would be like an automatic, you know, yeah. excuse. Like yeah. even the way she like, said it, she's sneaky. The way she said it was kind of like, um, I don't know. There, there was yeah, something. It was very like, of course, I go. Through yeah, that. it was something off about just the way she said it. It just didn't sit right with me, and it just, I don't know. I got a weird vibe from it. So, <clears throat> anyway, that's my take on her. I think we're all in agree. I think she's we're predicting a pretty early boot, if not first. That's my first boot prediction right here. Uh, but yeah, I think we're all pretty much in agreement on this one. Is a pretty, uh, uh, which is unfortunate, man. She's beautiful. I like her, but uh, not built for the show. I don't think. All right, so that is Vanessa McTavish. Here oh, we last person. Here we go. This is the last one of the cast. This is it. This is Zach Nielsen from Ottawa, Ontario. Ottawa, Ontario, that's where I'm from. Uh, startup senior vice president. This guy says he's like the Kim Kardashian of Ottawa. No disrespect, man. I'm sure he's a nice guy. I've never heard of him. I'm from Ottawa. No idea who he is, so I, I don't know. Uh, no disrespect. I was going to ask that. No idea. Never heard of this guy, but. Maybe I don't know anybody. I don't know. I, I thought I knew enough people around here. But uh, anyway, uh, who wants to start with Zach? This is the last one of the night, the day, the night. Who wants to start with Zach? I mean, he's from Ottawa. You need to. You want me to take him? The owners. Nobody wants to start. To All right, I got this. All right, guys. So this is Zach. Okay. Here's the thing. Um, you guys aren't gonna like this. You guys aren't gonna like this. Uh, I think here's the thing. There's two sides that this can go like all the way one way with me or all the way the other way. There's no middle ground with this guy. When he was talking to Jed, he had this like bullshit grin on his face, like this bullshitter's grin. Like, you know, he's just telling what you need to hear. He's just, he's talking you into what you need to know. He's, 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 he's manipulating you or doing whatever he, he's, he's working you right now. Okay. He's like a salesman and, uh, and that. So I feel like he's a good talker. Uh, here's the thing. I don't think it's going to work with this cast. That's the problem. I think he's a good talker. Either he's going to be very, very good and he's going to get away with a lot of stuff or it's going to just fall on the wrong side and people are just like, you get this guy out. He's driving me crazy. The other thing is in his bio, he's talking about how he wakes up every morning to grass fed steaks for breakfast. This is big brother. You're not getting grass fed steaks for breakfast. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, you're not getting that. So it's going to be a different environment that he's used to. So his comfort zone is already at zero uh, to begin with. But on top of that, he's obviously, I mean, he seems well off. He's the startup senior vice president. I don't know what that means, but uh, it sounds important. So, I mean, this guy is probably well off and he's used to having things his way and whatever he wants. And, you know, maybe nobody says no to this guy. Well, this is big brother and you're going to hear no a lot. And there's a lot of things you're going to want to happen that aren't going to happen. You're not going to be able to eat your grass fed steaks. I like the guy. I think, I, but here's my other side of it. I think he's going to be a surprise to a lot of people. I think he's going to be uh, manipulative and I think he's going to do well on that side of it. I think. I do. I know people want to see this guy go. I think he's going to be, he's a, he's like a guy's guy. Like you see him when he's like high-fiving everyone. He knows how to pump people up. You know, when they walk in the office, high, now, do they do that every day? Probably not. They probably do that for the camera. But, you know, like, I think this guy's a guy's guy and he's good at pumping people up. Like, hey, let's go. You know, it's my guy. You know, he's, he's good at talking. He's got that. I think he's going to do well. I don't know how he is competitively. He seems athletic. I think he's athletic. So I think he's going to do competitive, do well competitively. He's a good, it's very good socially, but is it going to be too social? Sometimes when people are too social, people don't see it as genuine. So that's my biggest X factor right there. If he can keep it kind of like to where people are believing what he's saying and buying what he's selling, I think he's going to be okay. But, but that's a big X factor. It's either going to go, people are going to be like, yo, this guy's a bullshitter. Like get, get rid of this guy. Or they're going to buy what he's selling. There's no middle ground with me. It's, it's all the way one way or all the way the other. Um, I think the show needs a character like him. I think we need Zach without Zach. What do we have? Like, what kind of a season do we have? I think he's good for the season. So I am cheering for him a little bit. I know this is going to be a hot take because uh, I don't think he's very popular with the community. I am cheering for Zach and, uh, simply because we need him. We need this character this season. 
I think it's going to be a big X factor. So yeah, I want to see Zach in the house. I want to see him there. I think he's going to be the center of a lot of drama, a lot of the the fights and a lot of the problems. I think he's going to be stirring it up a little bit. And uh, I'm here for it, man. And he's from Ottawa, man. Yo, what's up? What's up, man? You know, so um, I, I'm here. I know this is a hot take, man. I know it's a hot take. And I know, I know. Uh, Zach, <laughs> let's go, man. Let's do it. Why not? Uh, that's my take, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't know. What do you guys think? Keith, go for it. Let's hear what you got to say. Me? Yeah. Uh, um, I think Zach could win this game. What? Oh! Uh, <laughs> That's a hot take. I think That's a, a hot take. And I think a Connors is what you need to, to take him to win the game. Um, he's 34. He's the exact same age as me. Um, he's a Sagittarius. Our birthdays are close. We wear our hearts on our sleeves, but we know when to show the, the cards. You know what I'm saying? Um... Yeah, I, I think he's going to be able to fool a lot of people, like how Kevin Jacobs did. He's going to be able to just pull a wool over their eyes. I, I don't know. Would I be dancing out in the street in any weather if he was first boot? Yes. I would be ecstatic. <laughs> um, but I think he potentially has what it takes to win Big Brother. I think he's going to be the leader of the bros. I think he's got the intelligence... First off, I, I think like nine out of or eight out of almost all the guys except for two had their shirts off in their bio profiles or whatever. Um, and he was one of them flexing with his shirt off. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think he's going to be the leader of the bros. And I think that's going to take him deep. And he might be able to manipulate, lie, cheat and get his way to the uh, to convince people to give him a hundred thousand. That's a, that's a hot three, take. Baby. The winner, that's big. That's a big. That's a hot. Like that's a hot diggity take. That's a, that's a, like, I thought he was going to do, like, you know, he can manipulate, but the winner, like, that's, like, the guy, like, the last that's one standing. Winner picks, that's all I got. That's, that's. Kuzi, that's, Kuzi yeah. Zach. That's, wow. That's, wow. Hey. That's I good. The smartest man alive after this. I like it. I like or, it. Or I could be, I, I hope I'm wrong, to be honest. I hope <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jess, what do you got? Say, I, hope it, but he hopes he's wrong. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> He's getting a vibe. You know what I mean? I, I think he's going to do well. I'm with you. I think he's going to do well. And uh, I think he's going to do well. But here's the here's the thing is he doesn't watch the show. He doesn't know the show. He is friends with Emmett. So I'm sure Emmett's been coaching him along the way. But the guy hasn't watched the show. And and that's a big... Neither did Tashawn. Neither did yeah. Tashawn. But that's the thing. But here's the difference, though. I think Tashawn is more like personable. And he's more like, mm -hmm. you know, like that magnetism. People just have that magnetism. When you meet Deshaun, it's like, oh, hey, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, it draws you to him. Um, yeah. This guy's more like political, which, you know, it's, 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 I don't know if it's the same effect. Maybe it is. I don't know. But I, I feel like Deshaun just has that magnetism to him that it draws people to him and they want to, you know, get to mm -hmm. talk to him and be his friend. Uh, and that's, that's a, that's something you can't teach people. Either you have it or you don't, you know? So. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I'm with you, man. I think this guy, I think he, there's something to him. There's something to this guy and, and I want to see it. I want to see it for sure. Uh, what about you, Jess? What are your thoughts? Uh, I, I'm flabbergasted by these takes. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, if I was dead, I'd be rolling in my grave. Seriously. <laughs> what? I, I'm no. so, yeah. I, I cannot believe that. Keeper's is a little bit more extreme than mine. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be pointing fingers at me, Bruno. Let's just I, I'm going to say a couple of things. I'm actually glad you, both of y'all talked because uh, <laughs> this was not what I was expecting, A. Um, B, I think someone said what uh, he, he gives me that used car salesman's vibe. Like, he does. So, like, um, look. Overall, when I look at him, he kind of looks like the Miz, doesn't he? He looks like very yes. cocky and just like very, mm -hmm. like he's got this just ill stink energy for me. But here's the thing. <laughs> when Keith said that it reminds him of him in terms of like how they're both Sagittarius and all of this other stuff, like, look, <laughs> there's a part of Kiefer. I love you to death, Kiefer. You're like my brother. Okay. Um, but you have this sense this of, and, you, and you'll, I'm sure that you will um, attest to this. Like you do have a sense of confidence to you that can come off cocky, you know, in sense, in ways you've been told, I'm sure. With um, all due respect. But, 
with all due respect. <laughs> However, you pull it off because there's this loving, endearing part of you that just feels so relatable. <clears throat> he now, as a Sagittarius, now that you're saying that he's like close to you and that's what you see, I see that cockiness in him and I don't see him. I see him mm. just not being endearing, just looking straight up cocky, full of crap, and just getting booted off or being wanted to get booed off very, very quickly. I do see um, him, you know, making making some alliances with the bros, and I do think that he could probably be like, you know, the the manipulator and the and the you know leader of these bros. And at the same time, that's also going to get him. Um, yeah. targeted pretty fast because people will see right through it because they'll know that he's, you know, kind of like the brains behind the brawn as well, just because, look, he gives me old, he gives me old vibes even though he's not old, like he, like, very settled into his ways I feel like there's just no room there's no endearing quality is about him, sorry, like there's yeah. just nothing, nothing there and um, but I see him making good friends with like someone like Roberto. Like I yeah. see him mm -hmm. being yeah. friends mm -hmm. with someone like Roberto. He says he doesn't like big personalities. Half of this cast, so I feel like he's just gonna rub either be rubbed the wrong way by a lot of these people, or he's gonna rub them the wrong way because he's, got, he's not gonna be able to to hide that you know that cockiness or that you know. Yeah. Yeah, that feel, that feel of it. Like I'm just not I'm not So that's I'm not feeling it. Like that's what I was you saying when No, you're right. When I could say when I was saying before where I could see the divide already, it's exactly what I was saying. This guy, I see him as reeling in all the bros. This is going to be the guy that's like, yo, we all got to work together, all the boys, all the bros. That's this guy. I could see it. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. And like you said, he doesn't like the big personalities. That's like Daniel and like that's a he's a big loud personality. Uh Renee, is it Renee? Uh what's the other girl? Um Shania? There's all these big personalities in there. So it's like you almost see the lines drawn because he doesn't like the big personalities, but he I, I see like he's also the one to reel in all the the bros. So it's like the the lines almost draw themselves just like that, you know? Maybe it plays out that way, maybe it doesn't, but that's what I'm saying. So there's already, in my eyes, I can almost already see lines in the sand before we even see them in the house, just by their bios and stuff like that. If 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 the chips fall the way they 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 were speaking, you know. So uh, I don't see this guy winning. I mean, that's that's a take, that's but a uh, take. like whoa, definitely not. I don't even think people would like him enough to vote for him. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't see him winning. The hot takes, baby. But I do. I. I. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a prediction. Week three. I'm saying week three is out. Week three. Week three. I'm gonna say he's out. Yeah, I'm gonna say week three. That's a prediction. Pre jury. I. I. I hope he. I hope he's there. Like I said, I think the show needs him. I think he's. Uh, he's. Uh, he's. He's good for it. He's gonna be that big personality. Like uh, on like the like like a like a villainous like not like a villainous but like a, just a mischievous. I just see like uh, he's gonna be the character you're gonna love to hate. Everyone's gonna love to hate this guy. That's the way I see it. So. Um, yeah, that's my take on it. So that's, yeah. that's the cast guys. That's the cast. What are, what are we thinking here? Who do we like? This is a hot mess. This is a hot mess. I'm this, chaotic I'm season, Brother Canada season 10. This is wild. So here's the thing. Here's my, here's my takes. I like, um, here, let me, let me pull them back up here. One second. Let me pull them back up. So here we go. So I like, um, my winners. I, I like Koozie. I do like Koozie. Um, uh, man, the way, like, here, you know what? It's really hard. I'm not even going to lie. It's hard to pick a winner here. Like, someone has to win. Like, one of these people is going to win. It's like, how? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, this is hard. Like, if <laughs> to pick four people to be pre jury is hard because to me, and I'm no, no disrespect with all due respect. They're all pre jurors in any other season. Everyone here is, is pre juror potential. And with all due respect, I like this guy, Jonathan. I like Jonathan. I like Kuzi. I like Santina, but I don't see her. I like Ty. I like Ty. I like Shania on a personal level, but horrendous big brother player. Zach, I think is needed for the show. He's going to be like the quote unquote villain. I like Jonathan. John, you know what? Here's my two picks. Here's my three picks. Jonathan, 
Koozie, Ty. That's my three picks. What about you guys? We're going three. We already heard. What was yours? Uh... Kiefer said Zach, Shania, and Vanessa. <laughs> no, I did not say any of those names. Um, <laughs> so last season, um, I picked uh, Taylor to win the game for BBUS. The season before that, well, it was Big Brother Canada. I picked Josh to win. So I was pretty close on that. So I think I have validity and wait till I pick in order of who I think will win. Okay. Koozie, I have Ty, and then I have Zach. That's my top. Three. Okay, but here's the question right Who were and your I'm other picks one? last season? Michael. Who? Uh, I picked Michael. Oh, you're talking U.S. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, last season I can pull that up. It is right in. Let's see it. (laughs) Oh, hold on. Jay. Well, I did pick Jay, but that's the indigenous connection. Um, I picked Gino. So two. I mean, no. With all due respect. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I picked Moose, but that was in a and Moose for the winner picks. The winner picks I only picked was my only pick for winner was Josh. I, okay. uh, that that's all. That's the only information that I have from my notes. So conveniently, everything else was erased. <laughs> all the other notes were erased. Not just right. so okay. So you pick Zach. Who do you pick? Zach, Ty, and and uh, Koozie. Koozie, Ty, and Zach in that order. Oh, so Koozie, Ty, Zach. Okay, what about you, Jess? Who do you pick? Okay, so I will say I. I did pick my draft last year was Kevin and I won the year before that was Kiefer and I was pretty damn close. Oh, not close. You were my, you oh. were my draft pick. So oh. horrible. I will say I, what I, I feel like I have a good sense of what's going on here. Right. I, I'm going to have to give it to my Daniel. You already know I'm it's, Daniel it's a writer, you know, um, I will say Kusi because I adore her. I think she yeah. just has what it takes. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be quite honest, I want like I'm gravitating th- to Jonathan right now. All right. And I think mm. I-, I think Jonathan <laughs> might. I think Jonathan might. So I think Bruno and I are kind of almost, almost, almost there. Almost. You know. So yeah. And, uh, so Jess and I have Koozie and Jonathan together, but she has Daniel. And I think Daniel's pre-jury. And then me and Kiefer have Koozie and Ty together, but he has Zach, and I think he's pre-jury. So that's interesting. Who is, so I have Jonathan, Koozie, and Ty. Ty is, is a long shot for me. Like I think it's possible. It depends where his head is at when he gets in the house, but uh, the I'm potential's there. If I had to pick one, Koozie is my choice. I like Koozie, yeah. too. I think, I think um, Koozie is a very like close... You know, close second, I think in my mind, I don't know why I'm seeing, you know, Daniel and Kuzi as a, you know, as a close duo. And I, I think Kuzi will have a good in with some of these uh, other, you know, other guys. And I yeah. think that she'll bring in, you know, she'll bring in Daniel. I think that... Um, Daniel could also bring in some of the, you know, some of the girls, I think. I think Koozie's going to have the most connections pretty much, or this, like, Koozie, I think, is going to be set up pretty good. I, that, that's what I see. I mean, again, we could be way off, but fingers crossed. I'm surprised. I, I'm very interested to see the Daniel, um, John, Michael, Sosa connection. Mm. Um, They're both, uh, it seems, I, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to overstep and say that they might be attracted to each other in terms of like maybe a show, like a show it's possible type of situation, but they're both probably amongst all of these people. Um, D- the ones that know the most about the game. Right. So I think it's, it, it'll be a very interesting dynamic to watch, to see if that pulls them together or if that separates them in sense of like, I'm seeing a threat right. because I see another super fan. Right. You know, mm-hmm. or if they're like, oh, we're both super fans. Let's work together. Right. It's a very so, good, uh, like, very good call. Now, I know Daniel said he was open. Casa. He was open for a showman's. Did John Michael say he was open for a showman's? I don't know. I know Daniel said he was. You have to say that I have to go. Yes, we're done here right now. We are done. We are done. I just want to say, okay, so let's close it up. Let's close it up. So, Keith, 
Jess, thank you so much for uh, for doing this. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. We did take a little bit to sit down and talk. You guys are amazing. I love you. And uh, yeah, again, guys, if you're listening, uh, Jess does a podcast. She'll be doing it. I'm going to put the link below. So Jess, give us the link and we'll put it below. Kiefer does one as well. Uh, give me the link. We'll put it below. Check them out as well, guys. And uh, they're amazing. These are two of my very, very best friends. They're very, very close. Uh, we, we were always hanging out, playing games, talking together. And and I love them very much. We You'll see them in my Twitch channel a lot. We do play a lot of games in there. Talk Big Brother and stuff if you want to come check that out as well. I will be streaming the, li- the episodes live on a, on a site called kick.com. If you want to check that out, I'll put the link below. But uh, yeah, I want to say thank you for taking the time, Kiefer, Jess. I love you guys very much. You guys are very, very good friends of mine. I love you and I appreciate you. If you ever need me on your podcast, you let me know. And I'm there, no questions asked. I love you guys. Everybody, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like, the follow, subscribe, all that stuff. You know that stuff. You know, I got to say it, right? I'm just going to say All right, we're out of here. Take care, everybody. Thank you very much. We're out of here. Peace, 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 peace.